Tonight, the Black Knights of Army march into the Lone Star State hoping to settle a score. Last fall, North Texas stormed the banks of the Hudson River, knocked off Army at West Point. Army returned the favor in the heart of Dallas Bowl, leaving Texas with an overtime victory. So tonight, it's the rubber match as Army and North Texas head for the battlefield for the third time in 13 months. Tonight, we welcome you inside Apogee Stadium in Denton, Texas. Last week, North Texas wrapped up the West Division of Conference USA. Tonight, they step outside of conference play and take on the Black Knights of Army. Hi, everybody, along with Sean Salisbury, former USC and NFL quarterback. I'm Mike Gleason. Once again, great to have you with us here on BN Sports for more college football. And Sean, you look at North Texas, they already have a spot in the Conference USA Championship game. You look at Army, they already know which bowl game they're going to play in this year. There's no question they're going to come in here, try to eat the clock with that triple option. The big question is, can North Texas stop them? Yeah, Army wants to shorten this game, and that is the question. Can you stop a team in Army that does not want to throw the football? The key is this triple option. You don't see it much throughout the season. you got to hit the fullback, and they're so good at leverage. They may not out physical you, but they will get low man and leverage and get to angles. You have to hit the fullback. Those big plays will happen if you don't. Uh, Jay Bateman, the defensive coordinator for Army, he said Jeffrey Wilson, the running back for North Texas, he's the guy that keeps them up. But you know, as well as anyone, it's the guy that's flinging the ball around for North Texas. He's the key. Did you think I was going to choose anybody but a quarterback, Mason yeah, Fine? Forget the size because he may not be 6'4", but this guy plays huge, and I love him. And you watch him on tape, and he jumps out at you. Accurate, the ball comes out on time, and he will throw people open. This is the key, and regardless of the win in this game, they will take their shots. There you see his numbers. This may be one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the country, but in this conference, everybody knows if they're going anywhere, and they are, Mason finds the man to take them. Well, as the graphic said, he's hitting about 64% of his passes for the sophomore quarterback, but tonight he might be facing more than just the Army defense. More on that. Let's check in with Michelle Jengris. Just like you guys said, Army's de defense isn't all that Mason Fine is going to have to overcome tonight. He's also going to have to overcome this gusting wind. He practiced in it yesterday as this cold front started to roll in, but this wind has since intensified. I spoke with Seth Luttrell prior to the game. He said he expects the wind to play a factor. However, he's confident in the way Mason's been throwing the ball. For Army, it doesn't really change much. I mean, it's no secret that they favor the run. They've thrown the ball just once in their past two outings. Well, Michelle, I have to tell you, at 9 o'clock this morning, I went out for some coffee, and I think, uh, I'll ask Sean this, he was a former quarterback, uh, but I don't care who the quarterback is, at 9 o'clock this morning, those flags were perfectly horizontal blowing, and I think if you weren't a 200-pound running back, the wind might knock you over. And you take a look at the head coach right now in North Texas, uh, Seth Luttrell. Just his second year last year, of course, uh, he went to a bowl game. They were only 5-7 and seven in the regular season, but there weren't enough 6-6 six and six teams, and his academic progress rate was so good at North Texas that he received a bowl berth. The Jeff Bunkin in his fourth season, and what a job he has done beating Navy for the first time since 2001 last year. A shot at the Commander-in-Chief trophy this year for the first time since 1996. Should be a special football game, Mike. I can't wait. Got a team that doesn't want to throw and a team that wants to throw. This will be a blast watching Army and North Texas get after it. Both have a lot to play for. Both have had unbelievable starts and closes to a great season in Conference USA. Well, Sean, Army won the toss. They're going to defer, so North Texas will have the football first. And uh, Seth Luttrell says they usually get about eight possessions per game, and you know you're not going to get that here tonight, so they're going to have to score on most of their possessions tonight. And he wanted this first possession so he could take it down and score early, because when they score, and they score early on a lot of possessions this year, so they have an opportunity to put the pressure on Army's this, run game. The football game is underway. It's going to be taken at the one-yard line, and it's going to be a nice run back by the freshman, Evan Johnson. So Johnson gets all the way up close to the 25-yard uh, line. They say this young man is going to be a special one in the next couple of years here at North Texas. And even though the wind, Mike, in this game, it's died down a little from pregame, do not expect North Texas to back off from throwing the football and doing what they do. And they will mix in the run, dangerous run pass, obviously, and Mason Fine's accuracy will be at a premium tonight. 
So they'll start at the 23-yard line, and North Texas coming in averaging almost 37 points a game. That's second to FAU. We'll be talking more about FAU during this broadcast. And Wilson gets the first call, and he is swarmed under by that Army defense, so picked up maybe a yard on the play. Important for Army, and Army is one of the better defenses in the country to win on first down, to get in that line of scrimmage and create it in the backfield. So the run game for Mason Fine's football team doesn't have a chance to get started on first down. Fine comes out, looking for Bussey. Bussey has it at the midfield stripe. In coverage that time for Army. Great job, little quick play action fake. They said all week to us, Rico Bussey's their big play guy, big physical and fast vertical. They wanted to take shots early. They believed they could against Army secondary. That's where the weakness is. Great job by Fine. You can see the accuracy already in the wind. No play, no factor. I think that was Elijah Riley. Excuse me for the uh, pause. I thought it was 22, but 23 defending that pass. Here's Wilson trying to bounce to the outside. And he's going to be wrapped up immediately by Alex Ackerman, who's had nine tackles for loss in four of his last five games. So he's been on fire. Yeah, and Wilson's so special at bouncing. He's a big play guy. About 35 times this year, he's got runs over 10-plus yards. Look for him, the home run, the chunk plays. 12-plus yards is what they're looking for when they call those chunk plays if you're talking about North Texas. So they picked up three at second and seven right now. The ball at the 45-yard line. Fine again, wants to go upstairs. He does, and he has his man. This time it's Jalen Guyton, the Notre Dame transfer, all the way down close to the 25-yard line. Guyton's a big play guy. He's a big play guy. He and Bussy on the outside. They said they could pound the outside lanes in this game because they're going to be playing a lot of off coverage, three and quarters, which means you got the outside lanes with coverage all day long. You see it doing on the left side. Guyton on the right side. Those are chunk plays for North Texas. Well, Mason Fine came in just 188 yards shy of 3,000 for the season. He's moving the chains on their first possession. Has to be music to the ears for the offensive coordinator, Graham Harrell. Here's a little jet sweep right now. And knocked out of bounds just shy of the 20-yard line. By great job, too. We, we're talking to uh, Graham Harrell. They don't want to play a whole lot of horizontal football in this. They want to go vertical. That gives you a little shovel pass, which is actually a completion. But you got to spread them out a little more. Be alert for inside seam routes and post routes in this game. We get to the red zone. That was O'Kieran Rutherford getting some early playing time. He's listed as third on the depth chart. Fine comes up firing, and the intended receiver that time was Guyton again, and it goes incomplete. Yeah, had him. It's a hard throw. Good coverage on the outside lane. A great bootleg. Could have kept it and ran it. Had a chance on the outside. Just square shoulders a little more. Pretty obvious he missed the throw. The key is square him up, follow the ball, and have a chance. But they'll come back to that again. They're getting a lot of single coverage on the outside. Sean, you just saw a shot of number eight, Ryan England, uh, injured after the Ohio State game. And having him back in that secondary is huge for this Army defense. He is the key. He can play in the run game. He can cover. He's chippy with an attitude. They love him on Army's defense. Third and three. North Texas at 45%. It's going to be Wilson inside the... 20-yard line forward progress. They should spot that at about the 19. Had to get to the 18 for the first down. This is such a versatile offense with the quarterback in the running game. And they're nice and physical up front. And they're going to do this a lot. They want to put points on the board and they don't want it to risk it with the win with field goals. Inside this 20, 25, 30-yard line, you can expect to see this a lot for both teams tonight here in this game. This is the 23rd time that North Texas has gone for it on fourth down this year. It's going to be fourth and less than a yard. And Wilson has it. Bounces to the outside, dives forward. And it's going to be a first down for North Texas. You know, Sean, we came in here late September when they took on UAB. They were at 28% on third down. Now they're up to 45. Yes, and the change has been winning on first and second down. You don't do very well as a quarterback. Matter of fact, as a coordinator, it's like, you call the play, dude. I don't want to th uh, call this as a coordinator. <laughs> you win on first down. I think it's the most important down in sports when it comes to football, and they're winning tonight on first down. First down from the 16. Fine wants to go upstairs again. Plenty of time to throw it. Has his man. Far side, nice run by Kelvin Smith. And Kelvin Smith, the redshirt sophomore from Spring, Texas, 
has his 19th catch this year. Yeah, Mike, they love Kelvin Smith because he's a move guy. You can line him up in the slot, move him outside. Great job by Mason Fine. Not down there, go through your progression. One, two, stay patient in the pocket, no need to climb. Boom, hit your outlet. That's like shooting fish in a barrel. Now, Mike, have you ever done that? Uh, no, I can't I say haven't I have. either, but I know it's easy, and that's exactly what Fine did. <laughs> Nick Smith in the ball game now in the backfield. The Wilson gets the call. Wilson cuts back against the grain, and Wilson's in for the touchdown. That's number 15 this year, number 31 in his illustrious career. Mike, watch the vision on this. Plays dead, right? Watch him put his foot in the ground, a left foot in the ground. You've got to open your eyes as a runner. He does. Realize he can't get the edge. Foot in the ground. They seal the backside. Nice job. North and south. This is exactly what Seth wanted and exactly what Graham Harrell wanted on their first drive to make Army chase. And Trevor Moore on for the extra point. Trevor Moore's uh, perfect so far this year. And he remains perfect at 43 for 43. As a matter of fact, Sean, he's perfect in his career. Ten plays, 77 yards for North Texas, and that's exactly the way they wanted to start this football game. 7-0. Mean Green on top. Army will have the football when we come back. College football on VN Sports presented by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. Back in Denton, Texas, uh, North Texas on the board with a 77-yard drive. And Graham Harrell was saying that uh, they probably won't get as many possessions. Uh, Sean, they average about 74 offensive snaps a game. Uh, last year they said they got about 55, but they certainly did a good job that time in keeping that Army offense off the field. Yeah, and here at home they love first and second drives. And for their five wins here, they've scored on their first two drives. It's important for them. This team knows how to win at home. And what a great way to start. And this is, it's, it's odd when you're playing against now. Army will never quit on their run game because they're so good at it. Obviously as good as there is in the country. But it comes down to, they don't want to throw the football, Mike, in this football game. They just don't. They want to get to the point, three yards, three yards, three yards, and one. Because they will go for it on fourth down at their own 30 on fourth down at midfield, it does not matter. And with this win, this team has won, wins games without putting the ball in the air or completing a pass. This will be fun to watch. Trainer and Walker, the deep end for Army. It's gonna be a short kick and it's gonna be picked up finally by Walker. Walker over the 25 and dropped at the 30 yard line. So decent field position for the Black Knights on their first possession. And I don't know if it was the wind or they were simply trying to keep it away from those return guys. I talked to uh, Coach Luttrell before the game and in a game like this with the wind. And they are concerned about uh, Army special teams. The one thing we know about Army is they'll be extremely disciplined in everything they do. This team will rarely beat itself as witnessed by the record. They're not going to lay it on the ground very much. They're not going to turn it over much. If you can get that, it's an advantage. And North Texas defense will have as big a challenge as they've had all year long. There you see it, the quarterback, 7.6 yards of carry. Now that dive back, Wolfolk, so important, but this guy knows how to put it in the belly and get it going. Kalen Holt uh, getting the start at fullback instead of Darnell Wolfolk, which is uh, somewhat surprising. They'll all play. And not too much running room there as uh, they're hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. Joshua Wheeler, the, uh, the Jack linebacker, just inserted uh, back into the lineup and uh, makes the the tackle. And what about the Dr. Pepper impact players? Well, we know the quarterback, but the key a lot of times of the triple option is the fullback. And Darnell Wolfolk, when your fullback's averaging five plus yards of carry, that's trouble. And they don't need much gap. You can't over pursue this. You've got to stay at home and stay in that gap. Wolfolk uh, carries it about 15 times a game. Ahmad Bradshaw, the quarterback, about 16 on average, came in with 162 carries. Here's a second down play. It's going to be Walker. Walker gets up over the 35, dropped at the 36-yard uh, line. Coming up to uh, make the initial stop. Colton McDonald uh, in on the tackle. Now you'd think against a run team, Mike, here, it'd be like, ah, it's third and three plus. Maybe they'll put the ball in the air. If there's a guarantee in the world, the guarantee is they're going to run this football. It just depends on how and which way they go with this option. Triple option, so difficult to defend if your quarterback's got good press to digitation meaning a little bit of a magician. Third and three for the Black Knights. Trainer in motion. Here comes Bradshaw down the line. Bradshaw picks up the first down and then some. Down the far sidelines. Finally driven out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. Bradshaw. 
Have a look at this. Come down. Just a simple option down the line. You've got to make him belly so he doesn't get to attack. And when he does attack, got to put a body on him. Can't let him run free. He's too good, as good as we have in the country at running it, as we witnessed by Unitas guy. So Keyshawn McClain made the tackle, pushed yep. him out of bounds. Whose guy was that? Well, usually, depending on rotation, they'll have a man, obviously, inside for the fullback, and you'll have a guy for the quarterback and a guy for the pitchback. Quarterback man's missed his assignment. Ball on the 38 of North Texas right now. Picked up 25 on the play. There's the pitch outside. It's going to be Walker. Walker trying to get the edge. And Walker's uh, driven out of bounds by Kimon Hall. And you talk about the lack of passing, but you talk to Brent Davis, the offensive coordinator. He says that is their passing as we take a look at the Dr. That's Pepper impact player. Keep an eye on the linebacker, Igea. He is uh, one of the better ones. We have big, strong, physical, and their best presence behind the line of scrimmage as far as tackles for loss and sacks. You may not need many sacks, but they'll be need to, they will need to have some tackles for loss in this game. And you had mentioned about the quarterback assignment and hitting him. One thing you got to know that they're like a point guard. They can distribute the ball quickly, so you want to stretch that uh, option, the triple option, as long as you can defensively. More after this play on the clarity of that pitch. This is going to be uh, Bradshaw keeps it, and he's hit immediately by uh, Brandon Garner, but not before he picks up a, a decent gain of maybe three on the play, and that's what they're looking for, three, four yards a crack, right? Mike, great point. Took the words right out of my mouth. In, in a triple option offense, it does this. They want three yards. They figure three yards is a win where most offenses are four and a half, five yards on first down. Three yards is a win for Army in the triple option. Point I was trying to make is they don't pass the ball much of right. officially, but those pitches, according to Brent Davis, that's what they consider a pass. That's all that their pass game is just their extension of the run is their pass game. That's exactly right. Now the third down play, they give it to the up back. And it's going to be Andy Davidson with the carry at that time. He comes in averaging 5.2, identical numbers to a Wolfolk. And they're going to pick up the first down, so it's another first down, and the clock continues to run. And Mike, a lot of times when you're a defensive front and a defensive coordinator, you want to create a new line of scrimmage to get into the backfield. Against a triple option, a lot of times that's not the best thing to do because you overrun the fullback or overrun the pitchback or quarterback, and the holes become bigger. You've got to be stout at the line and make sure you keep leverage. Their last graphic, 3-1 and one this year in games. They have not completed a pass. Didn't even try one against Air Force this year in that victory. Trainer in motion. Bradshaw keeps. He cuts back inside the 20-yard line. Dropped at the 18. Might be the most phenomenal stat on the planet. 3-1 and one in games you don't complete a pass. Watch the great decision-making by Bradshaw. We talk about quarterbacks dropping back and throwing and have great vision and eyes. Take a look at him. Boom. Eyes up. His head's not down. He's reading the exact pitch man and the uh, leverage and hits it up the hole. And when he makes a decision, he puts his foot in the ground and gets north. Great, great vision by Bradshaw. E.J. Igea finally came up and made the tackle, but not before he picked up nine yards. This is Wolfolk now grinding those legs. You look at all four fullbacks, Sean, pretty comparable in numbers, but they said the return of Wolfolk, he brings so much consistency to that fullback. Spot. Absolutely, and safe with the football too, Mike. Inside safe, pounds it, and they. this team, you will rarely drop them for a loss. They're always positive yards gained for uh, Army's inside run game and in their run game period. This is such an, an unbelievable challenge when your quarterback is one of the better decision makers in the country and put it in that belly and when to pull it out and Wolfolk knows when to hit it hard and inside. You mentioned the 7.6 yards per carry by Bradshaw. He's four for 42 already this, this ball game. This is Bradshaw again. Bradshaw inside the five yard line and finally stopped at about the two for the Black Knights of Army. Have a look at this now. He start with the belly. They start to get the belly where it makes the pitch tough, and then he puts his left foot in the ground and gets going. When you head to that, once again, you try to get it and widen him so the pitch uh, relativity to the back, but he's so good and such a quick decision maker. He doesn't let you give you any time for air or any room for air, and they have a small margin, as the coaches at Army told us, a small margin for air in the run game. Davidson. Davidson uh, sniffs out that goal line, stopped at about the one and a half yard line. So once again, Wolfolk averaging 5.2, Davidson 5.4, Holt 5.2, then Connor Slumka 4.4. We're probably going to see all four fullbacks tonight. No question. And when you have eight wins and you're averaging that many yards per carry, I don't care if it's the triple option or you and I in the parking lot, <laughs> you're going to win a lot of football games. They are so disciplined. 
And I love that they're not a right-handed or left-handed team, meaning that they'll run it equally well either side of the, uh, of the line of scrimmage, either side of the football. Davidson remains in at fullback. Bradshaw goes in for the touchdown. Ahmad Bradshaw, that's going to be his 10th rushing touchdown in 2017, his 23rd for his career. And just like that, North Texas scores and Army answers. Too easy, Mike. Too easy. And North Texas, the, the problem for them is going to be defense this entire night. We know they can move the football. But that's way too easy to push it down the field. When first contact is beyond five yards on the quarterback, it's going to be a long night defensively. You have got to get stops early in downs. Blake Wilson, the senior from Boca Raton, on for the extra point. With 4.52 to go here in the first quarter in Denton, Texas. Right down the middle. And it's good. Well, Sean, North Texas goes 77. Army comes right back with a 70-yard drive. How you like this one? How you like this start? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> a little higher scoring possibly than we anticipated. Welcome back to North Texas where the score is tied at seven. And when Jeff Munkin took over this Army team, he installed five principles, five keys to success. He said his players really bought into that. I'm going to read you those five principles. He said, be the tougher team, be the more fundamental sound team, win the turnover battle, have no foolish penalties, play together with superior effort. And this one was my best and my favorite one. Don't flinch. Well, Michelle, I like that last one, don't flinch. It's uh, good to know that uh, your Army your, your cadets, your plebes, whatever you want to call them, uh, that aren't flinching. I got news for you. Well, tonight for them, these guys, this is a big moment, big game as they all are. I would say they're pretty good at handling pressure. Great job. And I love those five keys. And that's why Coach Monken is one of the, in my mind, one of the national coaches of the year this year. Schrag with his second kick. Johnson, the freshman, bobbled it, uh, but then he gets it up over the 15 and close to the 25. So sometimes you bobble that football, you can almost break it, but he, uh, he gets it back up to just shy of the 25-yard line. And that's uh, pretty much exactly where Mason Fine and company started the last drive. To me, some of the times the most important parts of a football game are response. There you see, uh, Coach, uh, as, as Michelle pointed out, the keys to winning, don't flinch. And I'm sure they're pretty good at that. Those are great keys, and that's why that man, Jeff Monk, is one of the better coaches we have in America. Absol great job. Absolutely. He says coaches believe in the system, and the players believe in the coaches. When they get the ball, I want to talk about their wide receivers and what they say about playing at Army. This is a Wilson uh, with the catch. That's his 24th this year. He had seven last week. It's up to about the 28-yard line. And if there is a weakness, that's the coaches say if there is a weakness, that's it for him. But he's a He's a good receiver, but has the ability to be a lot better. And I love the check down. And you hear me say pound the outside lanes, that check down underneath inside. Pound the outside lanes means they're giving you space. Great patience by Fine in the pocket. Play action this time. Fine looking, going for the home run ball, looking for Bussy. Bussy almost had it. And good coverage by Cameron Jones. Uh, penalty flag dropped at about the 43 yard line. Well away from the football, so it's going to be interesting what this call is. Yeah, I'd love to see you throw a little more in rhythm, Mason Fine, but i tell you what. Pass interference on the defense. You've got to locate the ball as a defender, but I like it. Every now and then, you've got to take your shots. He doesn't find the football. Bussy does a great job of coming back, so he runs through and initiates contact. Watch him come back for the football. Defensive backs have to find the football. I'm okay with the quarterback stretching a defense and taking those shots, even though he was falling off his back foot, especially with Bussy at receiver. And here I said decent coverage by Cameron Jones. That flag was uh, pretty far from the play, though. Nice move, left side, nice hole for Wilson all the way down to the 45-yard line of the Black Knights. How about uh, some of the Dr. Pepper impact players offensively for North Texas? And take, keep an eye, we just, we've seen Bussy, but take a look at Guyton, too, averaging over 16 yards of reception. They've got two really good bookend wide receivers that can destroy you on the edge and on the perimeter. Wilson picked up 11 on that last play, comes in with five 100 yard games, 12 in his career. Mason Fine, right down the middle, and has his man. And this one's going to go for six, Turner Smiley.
the senior from Frisco, Texas. How good is this? Little bootleg naked throwback. Ball's out quickly. Once he makes the decision, it is up and out. Puts it out in front for the touchdown. Army said they were going to play a lot of man in this game because they're under man, quite frankly. They don't want to let Fine sit back and read zone. But if you're going to play man, you better be good at it. Great job on a little naked pull-up bootleg throwback and a great job of letting his man catch it and run. That's understanding coverage and getting your head snapped around quickly so you're not throwing a blind throw. Nice job by receiver and quarterback. Well, Sean Graham Harrell said he'd like to see some long drives to keep that Army offense off the field. But, but you'll uh, take those points, right? Take them. <laughs> so Mason Fine must have been watching Mike White of Western Kentucky throw for five last night. White now with 22, and just like that, Mason Fine has 23 and number 24. And welcome back to Denton, Texas. The mean green looking mean right now with a 14-7 lead. Turner Smiley with his second touchdown reception here in 2017. Take a look at North Texas. They are soaring right now, a three-game win streak. Six and one record in the last seven games. They're shooting to run the table tonight at home. Of course, wrapping up the West Division last week, earning a right to probably head back to Boca to take on FAU. What Seth Luttrell has done with this football team you know, he's learned under some of the best, as we well know, Larry Fedora, Kevin Wilson at Indiana, great offensive coach. And the question will be asked, they don't want to hear it, how long is he going to stay here? <laughs> mean Green's got a good one, man. Got a good one. More on that after this return by Walker. Walker takes it at the 6, bobbled it. Walker gets up over the 20, and he's hit. And he's dropped at about the 24-yard line, so that's where the Black Knights will start this drive after going 70 on their first possession. And, and Mike, real quick, going about defense, when you're playing this triple option, as you come out and look at this, this is usually a team that'll come out with three down, meaning North Tech's defense, with a nickel in there, because a lot of times people are throwing the ball from high school, college, and NFL, it's a quarterback league, they love to throw it and spread it out. Well, not here. So they've taken the nickel out and replaced that with a 3-4, true 3-4 defense, because they want instant pressure on the pitch and the option, so they have a true tackler as an outside linebacker. Take a look at the Black Knights. This right is there. just stupid good right here. They average about uh, 59 carries a ball game. Wolfolk uh, in the backfield. Running the short side of the field. Bradshaw gets up to the 30-yard uh, line. So he, once again, it doesn't look like much, but he picks up the three or four yards. No, and, and Mike, when this stuff happens, when you're getting that four, three, four, five yards, the defense, I mean, you can be frustrating. You've got to stay the course, and it is a four downs every time. As we've talked, as we know yesterday with Troy Ref at the defensive coordinator talking about North Texas's defense and to continue to play. It's going to, this is a marathon, not a sprint, man. This just is because when you're playing them, they're going to grind and grind. Five yards can get frustrating. At some point, you've got to get this offense off the field. And speaking of Ref, the defensive coordinator looking for at least two stops. Here comes Andy Davidson. You predicted this yesterday that sooner or later the fullback would bust one right up the middle. He's all the way down to the 35-yard line of North Texas. This is, to me, everybody talks quarterback. That fullback's the bell cow in the triple option. This is your backup fullback, but they've got so many interchangeable. Incredible job. You cannot allow that. You can't miss tackles in the hole. Great job by Army. Walker gets the call. He stopped at about the 32-yard uh, line. And getting back to uh, Seth Latrell and moving on to a bigger school, he says, you know, if it happens, he has to make the decision. But I'll tell you, Neil Smotress, the president, and Ren Baker, the athletic director here, Seth couldn't say enough good things. And, he is, uh, and he's also said he's never been around a program where the Board of Regents and the bosses and the athletic director and the president are all in alignment. He says, Sean, I don't have to deal with that right now. We're just coaching football. We're winning and taking care of it. He loves it here. But that's the question he's going to get asked a million times throughout the next few years. But he has got this team rolling and the West Division champs. And Kel Walker, that's going to be a big loss for Jeff Munkin. Walker's their leading, uh, well, excuse me by saying this, but the leading receiver with five catches. But he likes to uh, get him out on the edge. And it looks like he's uh, in pain down there at about the 34-yard, 32-yard line. So I hope he's going to be okay. Yeah, let's hope so. You never want to see this regardless the... The depth in the football terms, they're so good with everybody inside and outside. And uh, let's hope that uh, let's hope that Kel's okay. As they take a look at uh, Kel Walker, we'll step away here from Apogee Stadium. 2:14 to go in the first. It's 14-7. Mean Green on top by a touchdown. 
So Kel Walker helped off the field. Uh, Sean, the last time we had Army was in Houston against Rice. Back in October, he averaged 12.7 yards a carry. Ran for 127 and three touchdowns against the Owls. So obviously that's a big loss uh, for the uh, the Black Cadet, or it Black Knights. Sh yeah, sure it is. And it uh, let's hope it's okay when you're helped off like that. You never like to see that. The versatility this team allows them. And then all of a sudden, Bradshaw takes on more responsibility, as does the inside fullback run. So John Trainer. At that wing back position or slot, if you will. Right up the middle. Here's Wolfolk. That's a touchdown army. So first it's Andy Davidson going 25. This time it's Darnell Wolfolk picking up his 10th rushing touchdown this year. As we talked about, and you mentioned, Mike, we were talking about it yesterday that how important that we will see this at some point. And Seth Luttrell, also the head coach at North Texas, said, we're going to face adversity. You've seen two big, huge plays by the inside run. That's a great job by the inside interior guard, uh, the two guards in center, of getting movement, creating just a seam enough. The bigger, the better, small seam they can get through there. But there is a flag on the field, I think. Oh, wow. So they're moving it back. So we'll get the call here in just a second. Remember Big touchdown looks like it's been called back. That story Michelle told us, Jeff Monken said, no foolish penalties. Well, and Jeff said they need to control the football because he thinks they're, I mean, they're outmanned in most ways. So play coming back. Rodney Burnett's our referee, did not get the call from him. But nonetheless, uh, the ball's back at the 37-yard line, taking the touchdown off the board. That was a nice hit uh, by Ladarius Hamilton. Came off that line of scrimmage uh, like a bolt. Now that's how you defend it. You come off your block, you get strong and get low leverage, and you hit that fullback right in the backfield so he can't go. Take a look at this. Low man comes off a block, sheds it, and wraps up. That's a great job of form tackling and wrapping up. And what Army likes to do, Mike, also in teams like this, to the defense and to you and I and to the fans, it looks like they run 4,000 different plays. What they do, run a handful of different plays, but they will formation you to death from the gun and underneath. That is how you stop the option and force long yardage. Third and 11, but keep in mind, this is probably four down territory. Here's the first pass of the ball game. Bradshaw completes it. Unbelievable. Third, no, it's incomplete. Didn't get that one foot down. Jeff Jekum thought he had it, and it's going to be incomplete. I, 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 little uh, pressure, scrambles, throws it right. You got, you got it. The ball's there. That is on the receiver. Uh, he it mistimed his jump a little bit. I almost jumped out of the, of the press box because they threw a football. Even on third and 12, they will run it. But a nice job. He gave his receiver a chance. Got to find a way with that one foot to get it down and time your jump a little better and recognize where you are on the field. That ball should have been a completion, but the right call by the officials. Last year when North Texas went up to West Point and beat them, beat them badly, it's hard to believe that Army threw it 21 times, but they also threw four picks in that game. They won't throw it 21 times in a month now, maybe a year. We got a timeout on the field, though. That, those are the type of plays if you're if you're North Texas that are backbreakers if they're complete because you don't expect that. And we they weren't going to blitz at all, meaning North Texas. They're not going to pressure at all because they don't believe obviously they need to with the pass game. So you let them drop back and throw when they want. But when they hit plays like that, you've got to find a way to get that foot down and make that catch because then comes down to not only a first down, you overcome a long third down. Have a look now. Now, you, now watch this. The ball's in the air, stays in the air a little too long, but that's not their specialty ball there. He got it Ooh. now, but the key is oh, he didn't control it, it, that's the problem. It looked now, as, we, as you see it from that angle, as if the left foot was down, but if there's a ball on the bobble, now I'm going to tell you what, that's uh, one of those you say, is that worth a look? And a better job than it looked on the, on the live. Let's have a look. Watch this now. Let's watch the ball. We saw the foot came down simultaneously with the catch, there's ball, catch, bobble. Nope. Yeah, That's bobble an incomplete right. pass. It's the right call. Got to maintain control through the uh, ground. Fourth and 11. 24th time this year. They go for it on fourth down, looking down the middle. And again, uh, Jeff Ajekum was the intended receiver, and they're going to turn it over on downs. That's okay. And this is we'll see this a lot when they cross the 50 going for it on fourth. We may, never, we may not see two passes in a row for this team again, meaning Army. But... North Texas will let that happen all day long. If they're going to make them throw, as you see the difference, at least they took their shots. 
and obviously the injury so far to Walker has forced them to throw the football in two incompletions. You know what, John? He was open. Oh, <laughs> if he drops it, a little more air. Now, I can pay, tell you the obvious that he overthrew it, but he overthrew it. That's one we want to drop in the trash can, about two or three more yards of air, and he may run underneath that. So good field position at the 36-yard line for Mason Fine and company. Here's Wilson, and Wilson's going to be dropped immediately by Wunmi Oyatuga, the junior from Lakewood, Washington. What I refer to creating a new line of scrimmage if you're Auburn's, hey, Auburn's Army's front uh, seven and they're down three is you play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. You do not want to let the run game of North Texas get going and playing on your side. That's how you force long yarded situations by pushing them in their own backfield. Just saw the numbers on fine. Good start. Six of seven for 114. Here he runs out of real estate and just throws it away. James Nautical, one of their better defensive players, was giving chase in a hurry. Sometimes and that's the smartest play in the world <laughs> for a quarterback. The play you don't try to make. You saw the post coming down the middle. Try to put your foot in the ground and throw it backside, throw across your body, gets you in trouble. It's okay every now and again to punt. Although you don't like it, it's okay to throw it away so you don't let field position flip. That's a smart football play. People are, oh, come on, make a play. Throw the ball out of bounds. We'll tee it up again. Mason Fine already with a couple of touchdown passes tonight. Or one touchdown, I should say. Uh, Wilson has the other touchdown. Excuse me. This one's complete. Just shy of the 45-yard line. I love this kid's ability to throw accurate and on time. Watch the accuracy. You either got it or you don't, folks. Sidestep, resets his back foot, puts it in the ground and anchors it, and puts it only where his guy can get it. Now they're going to have to, looks like they're going to punt it away in their own territory. You don't want to give Army that short field. But you keep an eye on fine and how I call it aim small, miss small mentality. You aim big, the ball misses big. You aim at a target, a small target. You miss that target. You still make it a catchable ball. This kid, Seth Luttrell, the head coach, as you see him there, has been around some good ones, and Mitch Trubisky, one of them at North Carolina. He said Mason finds as good as Trubisky. It's just it's not the measurables. Unbelievable. Well, the first 15 minutes in the book, it's been a game of long drives, a 77 and a 70-yard drive and a 76-yard drive in the first quarter. There's the wind here in Denton, Texas. It's strong, but it hasn't prevented either team from finding the end zone. 14-7 as we head for the second quarter, the main green of North Texas on top. Well, back in Denton, 14-7 to as we start the uh, second quarter right now. Take a look at the game summary. Bradshaw already with 57 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Mason Fine, he's hit seven different receivers already, Sean. I always judge that position, especially by a young quarterback like that. How do you distribute the football? And he's distributed to seven, and we're not even at halftime yet. Blake Patterson, the redshirt freshman, on the punt. Nice return by the Black Knights. And it's going to be Mike Reynolds on the return for Army. Brings it up over the 30-yard uh, line. For a second there, I thought he was going to call for the fair catch because it uh, got hung up in the wind. But uh, looks like they're conversing like there's a flag, but I don't see any yellow on the field. Do you? No, no, no laundry on the field. And Army won't be afraid when you look at the ball on the right hash. Or that's another thing about the triple option. It's not just a field option. They will run the ball to the short side of the field. They'll run it to the wide side of the field. They're not afraid to do it, which causes problems. And that's why your boundary corner, boundary meaning the guy closest to the sidelines where the hash mark is for those at home who are watching their first football game. There you go. <laughs> and wow, it, they're bringing the football back. Here's yep. the call. The ball was snapped before they're ready to play with one. Please reset the game clock to 15 minutes. That's why we didn't see a yellow flag. It's not a penalty. We're just a little anxious to play some football. Well, we're going to do it all over again. And Mike Reynolds says, doggone it, I had a nice return. Wipe that off the books and we'll play it again. And if there is wind, the wind now will be at North Texas's. It seems to be with the flags flying, the North Texas is back on this one. So Reynolds will be back at the 15-yard uh, line. We mentioned uh, North Texas Switch punters recently. Nice hit. Patterson, a redshirt freshman, averaging just over 41. He fumbled the football. There's that turnover that they did not want. 
Reynolds with a nice return, has to do it again, and he coughs up the football inside the 10-yard line. The two biggest game changers on the planet are turnovers by an offense or a defense and special teams gaffes, and there you go. Calls for a fair catch, doesn't get himself in position, catches it on the side and supposed to in front of him, which means he becomes a one-eyed receiver. When you turn sideways, you lose vision with both eyes. Catches it sideways, and obviously you see the ball on the ground. A great punt, great coverage. You cannot lay it on the ground like this. Now these, you can't come away with field goals either. Taylor North Robinson Texas must get seven, Mike, sorry. Sorry, Sean, uh, Taylor Robinson with the recovery. Robinson already with two block punts this year. And North Texas now has it first and goal at the seven yard line. Mason Fine comes out firing, intended for Calvin Smith again. As I mentioned earlier, they love uh, Smith's versatility because they can move him a lot of different places. You need him to line up in the backfield, motion, slot, anything, motion to the line of scrimmage away. Good throw, good coverage. Sometimes the, uh, the other team's on scholarship too. Ball's on the ground, second down. Almost imperative to score here for North Texas when you're playing this triple option team. Wilson stays on his feet. Jeffrey Wilson finds the end zone for the second time. Nice balance by the senior from Elkhart, Texas. Watch this now. Put his foot to the ground. Now, bump off a tackle. That's why you got to go low. You can't go high on a guy that's that big and physical. Pushes off you with that little forearm shiver and bounces into the end zone. How a great way to judge good backs in college football or in the NFL or in high school or how are you after contact? Great job in the red zone. You mentioned they must score. You don't want to keep swapping touchdowns. You want to do, you want to break serve. Special teams did it, and they respond with six extra point pending. Trevor Moore right down the middle of the freeway. And the mean green of Texas capitalizing. The last year at West Point, they forced seven turnovers, three fumbles and four picks. They capitalized. They turned it into a victory. Now they capitalize with a touchdown to open up a 21-7 lead. Watch this again. Little bounce, high tackle, can't grip him. Runs through two in the end zone. We're coming back. North Texas has a revamped nutrition program thanks to nutritionist Charlie Ashford. When he came on this year, one of his main goals was to get players to understand how nutrition goes hand in hand with performance and one player who really bought into that was senior running back Jeff Wilson and the results not only tonight speak for themselves after dealing with injuries throughout his career Wilson credits his current physical state and his health to his change in nutrition he used to be gassed after practice he said that doesn't happen anymore he's also been able to put up big numbers in the weight room guys back to you all right thanks Michelle it's amazing uh, the importance my wife has been telling me that for years <laughs> but I try to lose 10 pounds she says watch what you eat. you better hang around North Tech Texas, Mike. I'll tell you another thing. Seth Luttrell, the head coach, said not only by gaining 20 pounds, he's more physical and explosive with that extra weight. Here's Moore's kick again, and it's going to go into the end zone, so they'll take it at the 25-yard line. It's a great point by Michelle, how important. Hey, when you go talk to coaches across the country or when new hires happen, most coaches, after they get maybe that one coordinator, you know what their number one hire is? It's the strength and conditioning nutrition guy at all at these schools because that guy is so important or that gal is so important depending on where you are to not only injuries to strength and understanding it so your body can withstand game nine ten in a bowl game anybody can do it the first three weeks but north texas is doing it all year long great point great job michelle on covering this and this nutrition that North Texas has implemented. It's amazing how the game has changed from maybe the 70s and early 80s. What are you, to trying, right to Mike, what are you well, trying to say, Mike? What are you trying to say? Back uh, <laughs> in my day, you just lift weights, lift weights, lift weights. Everybody was bulked up, and everybody looked like a fullback or a linebacker. And now a lot of the uh, skilled position players look more like basketball players out there. Remember what I said? It was another five-yard gain. I said about response. Well, now after some adversity hits Army on the fumble, on the special teams, can you respond? Wolfolk with a second straight carry gets up close to the uh, first down marker. Looks like they're going to spot it at the 35. That should be another first down. Yep, so they're moving the chains that, again. That's 235 uh, pounds of football playing Jesse, full-grown man right there. 
And here's the key about this, and, and all the, peri the perimeter guys get all the love, receivers, quarterbacks, and the gaudy numbers. But I'm going to tell you what, the guys who are doing the dirty work inside, trying to stop that guy in the fullback, those guys deserve the big pat on the back. More on the confidence of this running game right after uh, this play right now as they give it to the fullback again as Andy Davidson gets up over the 40 to the 41. The left guard, Josh Boylan, was quoted as saying, they know we're running, we know we're running, so good luck. Yeah, it will. It's it's wills. What is that saying? It's here's an immovable object and irresistible force. And you think about what Roderick Young and uh, and Flushy and Johnson have to do up front dealing with that. And you have to rotate players because you're going to be tired. And if you play high and you're not rear end to the ground, you're going to have a long day dealing with that fullback running you backwards. Picked up six, second and four right now for the Black Knights. Bradshaw cuts it in. Bradshaw inside North Texas territory down at the 45-yard line. Bradshaw on the carry. People always say, man, don't you love it when people throw and spread it out and score a lot of points, and that quarterback looks pretty throwing it? Yeah, us as former quarterbacks who couldn't move love to throw it, but those of us who couldn't move also love to watch guys like Bradshaw and how good he is. Yeah, maybe he's a fourth running back in the backfield, but man alive is he good. The ball handling, it's like a point guard. Ball comes out, boom, little magician with it, and when you got it, you secure it. Take a look at that. It's pretty as good impressive. as there is in the country. It's pretty impressive that Arizona's on that graphic. Really. Well, that quarterback, Khalil Tate's pretty good, too, now. Wolfolk gets it inside the 40-yard line and moves the pile, maybe down all the way to the uh, 42, possibly. And by that way that you mentioned Arizona, all the throwing you're going to see with Darnold and Rosen in that game, USC-UCLA tonight, Khalil Tate quietly has become, in my mind, the Pac-12 player of the year, and he's done a lot of what this is doing. When you get on the edge, you secure the football and run it. Bradshaw's got that type of skill set with looks, the ball in his hand. Looks like Liasi Taralo. They call him the uh, Tuolo Bear. He's down at the 40-yard line. I believe that's Taralo, uh, number 15. And that's part of that depth we're talking about. When you got Young and Taralo inside, you're gonna, you are gonna you don't run over and get too much Gatorade if you're a starting guy or a backup guy because you'll get your rear end right back out on that field because this option can wear you out in long drives. And we, as we had talked about, that ball control for the, uh, the, uh, the Black Knights for Army is so important because Coach Monken knows how explosive that Mason Fine in North Texas, and coming from Graham Harrell and playing at Texas Tech background, naturally for, uh, for uh, co uh, coordinators that used to play quarterback, what do you think they want to do? They want to throw it, and they trust Mason Fine so much. Coach Monken on Army side knows that. So what do you do? You control it. You limit possessions. You don't want them to get to their normal 74 plays. You want to keep them here 50, 60 plays. 15 extra plays could be a touchdown or two for a high-power offense. Second and short, second and two right now. Monken uh, telling me on the phone this week, he said, you know, we know that North Texas is faster. They have better players or more talent, I should say. Maybe I shouldn't say better players. He said, but uh, this triple offense is definitely the equalizer as Bradshaw gets hit. And that's Colton McDonald, the linebacker spot. The last he made the last tackle too, but it was like 10 yards down the field. Yeah, that's a great job. Watch the tackle, watch it low and explode through the hit. You don't explode to it, explode through it, and you tackle and wrap up Bradshaw. Don't be one of those guys that come up and try to chest tackle him. You wrap him up, put your arms around him. Great job, Mike McDonald. That's how you prevent that from happening. Brent Davis loves this, the offensive coordinator for Army, to be able to put it in short yarded situations, and they got it again. Very short. Short and less than a yard, and they pick up the first down, down to the 32-yard uh, line. Again, it's the fullback, and it's going to be Andy Davidson uh, with the call. I can tell you this, on short yardage, there's a few things in life we know. What do they say? Death and taxes is guaranteed. So is fullback handling the football <laughs> in the triple option. And even and you know it's coming. And when I played at SC and we had Marcus Allen running our student body right and left, you knew it was coming. And then Bruce Matthews and Don Mosbar are blocking for it. You could tell them it was coming, and you still couldn't stop it. It's the same way inside with this triple option. It is very, very difficult to stop, and you must be patient, and you must understand adversity will hit you throughout the game as a defense. More on that offensive line after the uh, run by Davidson. He moves the pile all the way down to the 26. We talked about what Josh Borland said about good luck stopping our run. They frequently use that sixth offensive lineman, and the players from Army actually have a name for it. They call it try to stop us drive. Yeah, <laughs> good luck with that. They put a sixth guy in. You know, a lot of times if they have, a, if it, normal teams have a good tight end, 
uh, they'll put him, you know, that's how they'll normally run. Then you put three big fellas on each side. Let's go get it. Six linemen and Army, you know they're going to run it. 23 runs. Here's number 24. Wolfhawk gets it. Wolfhawk inside the red zone down to about the 18-yard line. Army was three of four on third down before the play. You know, the last uh, couple of games, actually, uh, Sean, they're 68% on third down. Yeah, which is phenomenal. And you, you talk about Wolfolk, and you look at 5'9", about 235, 240. He's hard to hit. Now you say, well, wait a minute. He's so big, it should be easy to hit. But the leverage, because he's so low to the ground, you can't tackle him above the belt because he'll wear you out. And then if you tackle him down low, that knee comes right up and hits you right in your chin. Wolfolk in the backfield at fullback. Looking for that pitch. They got it on the edge. Nice job. Boy, coming up, nice job is uh, Keyshawn McLean. That's, uh, if there's a Sunday player for North Texas, especially in the secondary, it's Keyshawn. I love when my secondary guys are physical. Come up, what do they do? You go low, put him to the ground, make it second and nine. That is a great job of exploding to the line of scrimmage. Now worry about some some option fake and that he's going to throw the ball. Good pitch by Bradshaw, but that's a great job in the secondary by Keyshawn McLean coming down and putting it on him. That was Fred Cooper with the carry, of course. Cooper getting some playing time. Uh, Cal Walker out with that injury. Still waiting to hear how serious that is, too. Nice job again now. In 95% of the offenses or so in this country, this is a normal either. If you weren't going to throw it, you'd draw it or you'd screen it. But most of them are dropping back, spreading it, throwing it, not Army. This is, oh, third and five, and third and a long five. That's okay. We're going to triple option you. Put the ball in our great quarterback's hands, and we'll see. And they're not afraid to hand it off to the fullback in a tight situation on third and five uh, or third and six. I'll be shocked if they throw it. Cooper in motion. They come back the other way. Bradshaw trying to get to the edge. He does. 10-5. Bradshaw in for the touchdown, his second of the ball game. Mike, I want you to watch on the initial fake right and then the reverse option. Look how low Bradshaw stays to stay hidden. Unbelievable job of not raising his body, staying behind his lineman to think that they're going right on the option normal. Look at this, stays low, can't find him, gets the edge, secures the edge. Great job of getting it up to the field. That's what you got to do on the backside. You got to be able to hook him, keep him inside. Great job by Army Smith up front and allowing Bradshaw to use his great running back style vision to get to the end zone. There's your response. This could be costly. They've already fumbled once, and uh -oh. this could go for two. Uh-oh. This could go for two. Well, it doesn't go for two, but Army doesn't get the extra point. And I was just about to say, how big was that fumble on the punts in North Texas capitalized? Because it's obvious they're not going to stop the triple option. Yep. Mike, I'll tell you what, and, and Coach Monken's going to be going crazy on the sidelines with this because now we're already, we're not the half, and two special teams plays have cost them right now the equivalent of eight points. The extra point here on the kick, and then the seven points for North Texas on the punt fumble. There you see the bobble, no shot. 8.58 to go, 21-13 after the miss at PAT. Well, Zach Potter, the backup punter, just uh, mishandled the snap. It looked like a low snap, but it probably should have been handled. Yeah, it should have. I mean, it's not wet out here, and I understand it's a dive. It was a holder, and it's a difficult job. But your job first is to secure and catch the football and get it anywhere where your kicker can swing through it. Keep an eye on that scoreboard now. It's way early, obviously, for two, but that's eight points off turnovers now. With the touchdown, the extra point for North Texas on the fumble, fumbled punt score, and now the PAT. Those things somehow, some way, have a way of come back and biting you on the backside before football game's over. And that drives coaches crazy because those are unforced errors. Brandon Garner, the uh, Mike linebacker, thought he had a two-point return for a second there. Low line drive kick. Uh, Johnson, the freshman, will take it at the four. Evan Johnson, home run hitter, a wedge. Johnson off to the races. Johnson might have stepped out of bounds, but he's driven to the turf inside the 35-yard line. Mike, Coach Seth Luttrell says we need chunk plays, and you'll take them if you can get them on a special teams as well. This is a field flipper. Great job. Now you get it down there in a position 
Got anything at your disposal offensively. Great seam by the, the uh, coming right into your living room. Great job of getting that gap. So much discipline you got to have when you defend the option if you're North Texas' defense. But if you're covering kids, you cannot get out of your lane. Huge chunk play and a field flipper for North Texas. With Wilson having such a good year, I asked uh, Seth Latrell if you ever thought about redshirting uh, Johnson. He said, absolutely not. If somebody can help you. And he definitely helped him that time. Nowhere to go that time for Wilson. Uh, that's uh, Cole Christensen, who's coming off with 10 tackles each of his last two games, making the initial contact for the tackle. Great job by Army of getting in the backfield and that stretch play. The, a lot of inside zone we see a lot. That's the outside zone. And Graham Harrell, the great offensive coordinator from North Texas, said, we're going to focus a lot more on stretch and outside zone because we believe we can attack there. Play action. Mason Fine picks up fires, has... Lawrence, Michael Lawrence inside the 25 to about the 24. You know, Sean, it was interesting. Michael Lawrence, earlier we talked about Ryan England getting back in that secondary for Army. Yep. Last year they played twice, and they said most of these Army's guys were very polite. He said, except for that uh, safety back there, he talked a lot of England's trash. chippy, but he's also that leader and emotional leader for them. Talks a lot, of, a lot of it, but he can back it up. Man alive does fine get the ball out quickly. We'll discuss that here in a minute. Third down and maybe a yard to go. And looks like Nick Smith is going to pick up the first down inside the 20-yard line. Little read option there. Get outside. You'll take that. They'll take those. When you're running four or five yards on a carry, that's big. You saw the play before that when Fine hit that. When he puts his foot in the ground and lets it rip, there's a difference. I don't ever like to talk to quarterbacks that I train. Hey, get it out with uh, hurry. Hurry. No, with urgency. That decision-making and the timing, ball is out when that back foot hits. This kid is unique. Fine. Over the middle. Oh. Looking for Bussy. Bussy's looking for his first catch. He's been hot as of late. The Oklahoma connection. Uh, they've connected five of the last six games. Now look at the great touchdowns. Great pressure coming from the outside. But what I love about Fine is to stand in there and deliver it. And Seth Luttrell told me yesterday one of his favorite things, or the most favorite thing, his most favorite thing about Fine is he's tough. I call it tough as 100 year old leather. He will stand in there and take those hits, and that's what makes him special. Anybody can run throwing off the back foot. Stand in there and take those hits. Great pressure by Army. Nobody can throw off the back foot like Aaron Rodgers, though. No. Huh? He can throw off the back. <laughs> he can throw doggone sitting on his rear end. There's a penalty different. flag. This time they hit uh, Mason Fine, and it's going to cost him. And look what happens now. The play we saw before. Pressure, stands in there, takes the hit. Okay. Personal foul. Unnecessary reference. Defense, number 19. Penalty side position to the goal. Automatic first Now let's take a look at this one. Instead of bailing out and falling away from the throw because you're afraid to get hit, stand in there, and that hit's going to come about three steps late. That kid's got guts. And I call it having the guts of a burglar in the pocket. Playing in that hula hoop. If you can picture a hula hoop in there, can you manipulate that pocket? And I don't care that he's 5'10 or 5'11, and neither does Seth Luttrell or Graham Harrell. This kid gets it out with urgency, accuracy, and he is tough. So it's first and goal at the 10 now. And Guyton with the snap. Well, what a snag by Guyton. <laughs> you want to talk about urgency? You get a 12th man when you're inside the red zone because the defense does, because you got the back of the end zone. Watch how quickly this ball has to get up where only his guy can get it or nobody. Really gets it kind of on the back shoulder where his guy can get it going out of bounds. What a great job and a great throw. If you hold that ball a split second longer, it's out of the end zone. It is out of the end zone. That's an understanding of where you are on the field and what it takes to give your guy a chance so he can go up and high point it. Mason Fine's doing everything that Seth Luttrell and Graham Harrell told us he would and then some. I'd seen this kid on tape but never in person. I didn't realize he was this good. This should be a household name across the country. And with BN Sports and, and Conference USA bringing it, they need to see more of this guy. I can tell you that. Well, nobody on this North Texas team had more than three touchdown receptions last year. Guyton came in with eight. More drills the extra points. So now Jalen Guyton, the Notre Dame transfer, nine touchdowns. He came in. He was number two in the conference. Big play guy, Mike. Big play guy. Again, understanding where you are. Watch how quick it comes out. Boom, foot in the ground, air, so it's not a flat throw. Guyton gets it, foot down, touchdown. We got an offensive show fest. Back in Denton, Texas, and we say congratulations to the North Texas women's 
soccer team, fresh off of their Conference USA Championship. How good is that, huh? That's impressive. And does anybody in the country or in the world cover soccer better than BN Sports anyway? <laughs> there you go. You got and, that uh, right. Congratulations to those young ladies. Well, Jalen Guyton, uh, Notre Dame transfer. Boy, he put up some big numbers after leaving Notre Dame. He went to uh, Trinity. Trinity, yep. Wound up with 968 yards, 12 touchdowns, and uh, really wasn't heavily recruited. He's been a great addition here. Who are you going to double? He or Bussy? Yeah. Pick your poison. You want a slow death or a fast one? Now they have uh, two deep threats, and uh, last year Graham Harrell said we really didn't have that deep threat. And we did, as Graham told us, and we had mentioned from the top, they're going to take their shots because they felt they could get them. Trevor Moore with yet another kickoff for North Texas. And this one goes into the end zone, uh, so the Black Knights of Army will start at the 25. Mike, last thing I asked Seth Luttrell on the field before the game was concerned about Army special teams. He said, absolutely. Well, they've answered that call, haven't they? The they big kick have. return, the fumbled snap by the holder for Army, and then the fumbled uh, punt return where you turn sideways and you don't get both eyes visualized on the football. Look what happens without the vision on the football. And it's turned into huge points. And really, special teams has led to, if you add them all up now, a total of 15 points when you count up the unforced errors for Army. They've got to get better at that, regardless of how good they are at the option. Now, this was the goal in North Texas. Make Army play catch-up. Talk about North Texas on a three-game winning streak. The Black Knights come in riding a six-game winning streak now. Bradshaw finds an opening. Nice balance, and Bradshaw is up near the 39-yard line before he's finally dropped. Coming up to make the tackle, the Mike linebacker, Brandon Garner. Another good job. Eyes always up. He does, and, and people think when you're watching that belly fake, and he does a good job of after the belly fake, finding the next hole. Is a lot of times people at home are saying, well, where should the quarterback's eyes be? Well, you get in the, it's the fullback's job to give him a good position to put the ball in, and it's his eyes to keep up on the coverage or on the front so you're not looking into the belly of the fullback. Here he goes again, off to the races, untouched inside the 35-yard line before he's tripped up. Coming up to make the tackle, Nate Brooks. Mike, it's just like a quarterback keeping your eyes on the coverage. If you're looking at the fullback, you can't see the front or the coverage. Again, he chests the belly, fullback gives him a big spot to put it in and pull it out of there. And then he gets it up the field. Great job. And again, they're leaving him with so much space. Why waste the pitch? It's going to have to get to the point where you're going to have to start attacking Bradshaw and forcing the pitch and see if somebody else can beat you. Well, Brent Davis, the offensive coordinator, he's well aware that he's only 31% passing, but couldn't say enough good things about his split second decision making at quarterback. Here he is again. He wrapped up by Brandon Garner again at about the 27 yard line. Nice tackle by Garner and you have to do that with all these Army players. You even watch their drills during pregame warm up of everything staying low and getting low and working off leverage. So you've got a match of leverage in football. One of the oldest sayings is low man wins and that's why it's so successful if you've got a great field general and a guy who knows how to run the show at quarterback on offense but on defense you can't play high or you've got no shot against the option. How about these numbers? Bradshaw in the first half 13 for 134 and a couple of touchdowns already. There goes Wolfolk. Wolfolk bounces his way inside the 20 down to the 15 yard line and he's finally dropped once again by Nate Brooks the cornerback and getting some action. How many times you, running backs playing with their eyes open it's nice look at that eyes open bounces off one tackle Bounces off another, takes a third guy to hit him, and when initial contact is three, four, five yards down the field, it's a long night. You're fortunate your offense and special teams has responded. You got that one stop in the first quarter. Another first down for Army. Wolfolk gets the call again. Boy, Wolfolk, that fullback, he hits that hole and he kind of uh, almost tippy toes his way if he's yep. not powering his way through. That's exactly Very right. Very agile. Yes, he is. For a guy that physical, to be able to move his feet and find a new hole is big, and that vision, as I've mentioned, so impressed with the big fellas up front for Army when they continue to move. It is you can't simulate this in practice. They didn't. The defense for the, the scout team for North Texas didn't use a ball on the field till the middle of the week, so they could try to execute this offensively, scout-wise. Another touchdown for Wolfolk. That's going to be his second. So he and Bradshaw are having a little competition going here. They both came in with nine, and now they both have 11 on the season. I'll see you and I'll raise you. <laughs> right. And what I meant by that uh, this week with North Texas is because you got to find your most, your, your quickest guy who can ball handle. Great, great read by Bradshaw to give it to Wolfolk, get in the end zone. But 
you can't simulate it because you don't see it, you don't run it with your own team. So trying to find somebody that can operate it at quarterbacks almost impossible. And this is what you face when you actually see it live and in color and full speed. Unbelievable the way they run this. What did Troy Rufford say? They didn't use a ball until Wednesday. It's the middle this of the week. week. That's exactly right. And the extra points. Tack it on the board. That didn't take long, did it? No, it didn't. Just six plays. They went 75 yards. A much needed drive, too, to get on the scoreboard uh, before the half. It's 28 20 now, so only a touchdown and, and a two point conversion. And down. I love it. The, you, you were, when you're not a big, huge, average 310 pound offensive line, you've got to operate in angles and understand where you're supposed to be and to be able to get to the next level. And these guys inside are doing a great job and on the edge of securing it. And you've got to be able to hook the outside so you give your option man, meaning Bradshaw, the quarterback, a chance to make a decision. And right now it's been pretty simple for him on the edge. He hasn't had to pitch the ball much because nobody's attacking him. But a lot of that has to do with the fullback. You become so aware and afraid of the quarterback on the edge, you start to pinch down and pinch down, and then he gets the edge. And then when you're aware of that, you become a little lackadaisical and you don't do what you're supposed to do in attacking the fullback and you see the result and the way the inside run on this triple option is dominating. Well, we mentioned the six game winning streak as we take a look at Army longest since 1996. That's the last time they won the Commander in Chief Trophy. 11 and two over the last 13 games and back to back bowl games and of course overtime win over North Texas in that bowl game. Uh, Seth Luttrell in his first year said their goal was to get to a bowl game and win it. And people looked at him like he was crazy. As Johnson goes back to receive the kick. Well, they got to the bowl game, but uh, they did not reach their goal because they did not win it. So it's, uh, it was interesting. He's not talking about a conference USA championship. He wants that win in that That's bowl exactly game. Exactly right. Way. That's what you play for, to win a championship and win in the bowl games. And that's exactly what they're playing for. So Nick Schrag tees it up again. Both kickers have had the ball blow off the tee, which is no surprise tonight with these uh, heavy winds in Denton. But earlier the winds were so strong, I don't think Sean Salisbury could have completed a pass. Well, you didn't have to have big wins for me not to complete <laughs> a pass, brother. <laughs> this is Johnson, the freshman again. Almost broke it last time. Trying to high step his way around. He's pushed it just inside the 20 yard line. Johnson goes 5'6", 180 pounds. Penalty flag dropped and some extracurricular activities going on down there, which is very uncharacteristic for this Army team. Very disciplined. disciplined. Yep, and, and don't get penalized much. Do you realize that they've had one 10 win season in program history? Exactly. Now think about that. One in the program the history. Kicking team number six. That's number six for an unsportsmanlike conduct foul. 15 yard penalty. First down. It's going to be Keyshawn McLean, their top safety. Yeah, they need him on the field. He's active and they got to have him. Or take that. I'm sorry, the, the kicking team. I apologize. Oh, there you go. It was on Army, I believe. There you go. Glenn Coates, a sophomore. It's always the other guy. Oh, he took a big old swing with his right hand. We watched that. You saw it at the end. They were engaged and got a little. I let that little ticky tack stuff go until the end. When you take a big swing with the right hand, you're going to get caught, and that's one. Can't get another one. So Mason Fine back at the controls for North Texas. They keep it on the ground, and Wilson's pushed back at about the 42 yard line. Ryan England coming up to make the initial contact for Army that time. Mason Fine had 424 yard passing game against SMU earlier. That was the most in Conference USA until last night. Mike White of Western Kentucky, 485 and five touchdowns. And Western Kentucky is bowl eligible in Mike Sanford's first year. So congratulations about, to them. I'll tell you something about that football team and that quarterback, Mike White. That's a Sunday player, my friend. Going for the home run ball, and it's great effort inside the 30 yard line. It's going to be incomplete. Ran out of real estate. Ball just a little late, just a tad late. That's, that's a heck of a throw with accuracy. How many times has he missed blatantly? He, he doesn't know Mason fine just as impressed as you are with Bradshaw on the ball handling and the run game you got to be equally as uh, as impressed with Mason Mason finds accuracy he does not miss just a little bit out of bounds otherwise that's a catchable ball almost got that foot down nice pitch and catch but now it's second third down at seven run game still in play here as Seth Luttrell told us in these uh, long yarded situations Rico Busty still looking here comes the blitz 
read beautifully. Lawrence, Michael Lawrence inside Army territory to the 47 yard line. He's dropped by Ryan England. Those are the two guys that were talking smack last yep. year in the bowl game. This is called football IQ by a quarterback and receiver. You see it? Set your feet, don't bail out, throw a hot read, too many people coming for you to block. Understand, get it in the seam before the secondary can get there. Great job of processing information quickly and accurately with the throw. New set of downs starting from the 47 yard line. Mason Fine chased once again by James Nautical. Nautical might be uh, might be their toughest defensive player along really with Alex good, Ackerman. Really accurate, good football player. Extra active, good football player, should I say? And once again, and I and a lot. Oh, come on, make a play for me. Throw the ball away. Throw the ball. You cannot preach this enough. Most most head coaches and coordinators will tell you. One of their favorite things about quarterbacks is that their willingness to not care about the stats and take an incompletion when needed. Here comes Wilson again. Tries to cut back. It's Nautical with the tackle at the 45-yard line. Nautical's all over the place. Guys, excellent running sideline to sideline. We talk about football IQ on offense. There's a high football IQ guy right there. Understands tendencies at the line of scrimmage. And if you can beat him to the punch, you don't always have to be the most athletic if you can outthink him and get there first. Third and eight at the 45. By has his man and uh, coming back for it's going to be shy of the first down. It's Bussy with his first catch. They'll go for it here. I'm going to tell you something. You watch. They they love Bussy. They love the way he not only is he their most precise route runner, but also can get to the home run. Watch him finish back at the quarterback. A lot of guys will run this curl route and sit in the hole. Watch him come push the throw, come back and get it. He comes back and finish it so he cuts off the defender so the defender can't undercut the pass. If he doesn't work back to the quarterback, it gets undercut for a pick or an incompletion. Now it's fourth and a yard. Otherwise, it's fourth and 11, fourth and 12. They're going to think about this after a timeout. That is a great job by Bussy finishing back at the quarterback. We run that route to 12. You finish back at 10. Heck, finish back at 8 if you have to. That is the reason the ball is complete. Accurate throw, yes. Great job of extending his Prior arms and catching it and pushing back to the quarterback so that undercut can't happen by the defender. Well, that previous play is under review, but as you mentioned, he came back for the football, so I don't think he got the first down, but they're going to take another look we'll at see, it. We'll see where progress gets it. But even then, he gives you a, a chance to right. make a decision to go for it on fourth down. Bussy is such a good job, and you always tell your receiver on these routes, to get your shoulders over your knees, your knees over your toes. Close, close the uh, gap. Step on the receiver of uh, the defender's toes. If he doesn't come back and finish, that ball is incomplete. Right. And another thing I love about the accuracy of fine, the aim small, miss small mentality, is watch where he throws it away from leverage. Leverage is coming inside defender. Hit him on the outside shoulder pad so there's no risk of a hand getting in there and breaking it up. That's a guy who gets it. It's a receiver who gets it. And it's obviously, and as Seth Luttrell told us, they did it. The field is confirmed. Fourth down. Fourth down, and they'll be, now they'll have to decide if they want to go for it or not. But Seth Luttrell told us yesterday that the offseason and being here and the quarterbacks and these guys getting them to do these little things and don't take a grand, it's the little things that sink, that, that, that sink a football team or elevate it, and they do the little things just like that that give you this chance on fourth and one. Well, it's the second time tonight they're going for it on fourth down. They're one for one. Wilson gets it, leans forward, has the first down. Excellent job. You know, it's interesting, Sean. You talk about Army. No surprise they go for it on fourth down, but they came in with 23 attempts. And here at North Texas came in with 22. Rolling on the field as the runner was down. First down. Let's see if that, uh, the call was right. They said the runner was down before the fumble. We'll see. Let's see his Ooh, forearm know. down. Looked like the ball was coming out before the left forearm hit the ground. He fumbled last week, and UTEP scooped it up and uh, ran there for a go. touchdown in the first half. Nice job by the right side to pin it down and to allow him to get to that level. But, hey, said the runner was down. When that whistle blows, he got no shot. But it's going to be a good timeout. They are going to challenge Previous it. We'll see. Is under review. So if the whistle did not blow... And they call the runner down without the whistle. We'll see. Keep an eye on the left forearm and simultaneous in the right arm where the ball comes out if he gets it down. 
first thing Seth Luttrell said at practice yesterday when we were singing the praises of Jeffrey Wilson he said well he's got to start holding on to the football he said he fumbled against UTEP balls out that's a fumble and he that's also, not close also lost one against Louisiana Tech keep an eye again on the left side of his body if it a knee or a forearm hit and in the right side of his body where the ball comes out there's no doubt the ball was out the question is as we continue to take a look at this did a part of his left forearm or knee hit the ground first it looked to me like the ball was out but I uh, I've seen a million of these watching TV and watching great broadcasters I'm not a great one but watching the great ones and the guys who see this say ah it's got to be overturned and it stays on the field <laughs> remember it's got to be indisputable visual evidence that says and the call on the field is the runner was down Paul so Jones we'll see if is they upstairs. Paul Jones is our replay official and I think he's going to overturn this I really do look like a fumble to me but what was that Saturday Night Live skit uh, uh, old school uh, hey I wouldn't know I'm just a simple caveman <laughs> yeah what do I know about this <laughs> but you got to secure the ball especially when you get on that side of the field Mike we talked about special teams and turnovers those are the biggest game changers and look how quickly when it was when, when it was 13 points how quickly the uh, army got back into it on their last drive keep an eye does that left knee hit no right Ball's knee, out no. right there that's a that's a clear fumble yep. and the forearms not down that ball is out and I'm assuming army recovered we haven't even talked about who I saw a couple linemen of North Texas go to it try to get on it I'm assuming army recovered but we're waiting for it. I don't know why it would take this long to decide. Maybe, maybe they're trying to decide who did recover. Spot, maybe the spot of the football, too. Exactly. Because that, to me, that ball looked like he was on the ground before either knee hit before the left forearm was on the ground. Well, if they do lose the fumble, it's going to be the second one in two weeks for uh, Wilson. And it's going to be the 10th loss fumble for North Texas here in 2017. Yeah. And, Mike, take a look at the clock. Now, what's it, a buck 35 to go at half? Now, if you get this ball in your army, do you think Army's going to come out and start throwing it? They may mix one in, but they, they believe they can go <laughs> 60 or so, 65, 70 yards in a buck 35 running again. They will not change their approach to two-minute offense. Their two-minute offense is their first down, second down, third down, fourth down, parking lot, practice, <laughs> at home offense. We are going to run the triple option, make you defend personnel, and make you defend formations. Well, and it's been, hey, like we talked about yesterday, Mike, when you and I were sitting around as a crew, they don't run very many plays. After review, the ruling on the field stands for a sound. I must Tough one. Paul Jones missed that one because I, the ball was out. Then I must, uh, I must, they do it. Hey, officials have a hard, I don't want to do what they do. That's why we get to be up here and judge and kind of say what we want to say and what we see. It looked to me like the ball was out before the four. Well, we have to call the it the way we see it, too. Yep, and, that's exactly uh, right. The football was out. It would have been the fifth loss fumble by Wilson this year. That's a huge play here before half. Mason Fine already with a couple of scoring strikes, running for his life. By, wow! Guyton had the catch. Ryan England came over and really laid the wood. Now, was that a defenseless receiver? I mean, I think that's football. Uh, uh, but the penalty flag has come out. Now, if it's helmet to helmet, it won't matter if he's defenseless. I don't think it was helmet to helmet. We'll have to take another look that's at it. That's an LL Cool J hit. Mama say knock you out. Let's hope the receiver's okay. Man alive. And I'm one of those guys, even as an offensive player, I think that we have many times made this game taking physicality out of it. But we'll see here. Accurate throw. Well, he did lower his head. That's, you've got to see what you He's hit. He's going to be gone. He is going to get called for targeting. That is a personal foul. Now, personal it, foul. it's a bang-bang play. Does he, he have a chance? Oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah, lowered his head. Now, I'm going to tell you this, Mike. If, his fa if he sees what he hits and goes face mask to face mask, that is not a penalty. That's good, hard, solid football. But when you're above the shoulders, you're always going to get called for that. But you watch the crown of his helmet. God rest his soul, but my old coach, Denny Green in Minnesota, always used to tell us, see what you hit. If you see what you hit, uh, many times you're not going to get called for it. I don't think he intended to hurt him, but it was a vicious After hit. Review, there is no foul for targeting. Well, there you wow. go. Pass. Wow. That's interesting. Now. I mean, they just got Ryan England back in the secondary because yep. of an injury. They would have lost him uh, for a half of their next game, which is the Army-Navy game. Now we also got, everybody assumes when a guy gets hit high that he's in concussion protocol. We'll take a look and see how he is setting up. I'm not sure about that one now. And I usually err on the side of defensive football. I do in England's physical. 
and he is the emotional leader of the defense, I do. I, I, I think we have made the game at times. we got to protect our players, obviously. And we don't want vicious cheap hits. But good hard football should be okay. But that one, if you hit him with the crown of your helmet and don't see what you hit, got to be a penalty. And obviously, a wobbly receiver goes back, and Seth knows Latrell understands that. He, I think, agrees with us that maybe the crown hit him. But we'll see if we get another look at it possibly and see if it was so bang bang he didn't have a chance. But man, they're letting him play. I take my hat off. Normally, that call would always be, a, they would usually, not always, but most of the time, penalize I take a my, hit that vicious. I take my hat off to Guyton for holding on to the football. No question. Or did he? They pushed it back. So I guess he did drop the I'm talking the about just to get his hands yeah. on it. No, he dropped the ball. Wilson weaves his way inside the 25 down to the 19 yard line before he's brought down by a host of tackles. Uh, Alex Ackerman making great, the initial contact. Great call by Graham Harrell on second down. Usually in this type of offense, they like to throw the ball, but as I told you, third and seven, they're not afraid to run it. That's one heck of a job calling and understanding defensive coverage. And they put the some check with me's and Mason Fine's hands and allow him to change the play. But the run call on second down yields him a first down. Mason Fine looking, and this one's going to be picked off. Max Regan gets his second. First mistake of the day by Fine. So Mason Fine throws a couple of touchdowns, and that was his 10th INT on the season with 53 seconds Watch. to go. Yeah, he stares him down the whole time. And then what's the one thing he hasn't done all day? Fall off his back foot throwing with his body going away from the line of scrimmage. They wanted to get some seam throws. That's the mistake, and he doesn't make many of them. But you see the lack of velocity, stares it down. And all uh, Regan did was drive on a football. That was a pretty easy pick. And again, they don't have to guard against the deep throw because in the red zone, you're squeezed. Stares him down. You see it from the safety's point of view. Drive on a football. He does. Little skinny post doesn't get in there, and a nice job by not only getting there but hanging on to the football on the interception. First turnover for North Texas, second of the ball game. But Army, known for their long clock eating drives, they're 92 yards away with less than a minute to go as Bradshaw gets up over the uh, 10 yard line. Again, let's hope Guyton's okay. What a hit that was. You never like to see anybody hurt, but man alive. Normally, you don't see the officials don't let him play at times that physical. They're letting him play. Well, that was guy a, comes back out, and he's okay. That was a Chuck Cecil type hit. Oh, Chuck was one of the great, about 175 pounds, dripping wet, and had blatant disregard for his body, and he would hit you. Fullback up over the 15-yard line. It's going to be Wolfolk again. He has a couple of touchdowns today, 13 seconds. That's going to be the last play of the first half. We are in for one heck of a second-half run here, Mike. This has been a great football game and pretty well played. All season long, North Texas, great balance. They came in with identical passing and rushing touchdowns with 23 each. They have two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, and a 28 to 20 lead as they head for the locker room. We'll be heading down to talk to Michelle in a second. Your thoughts on the first 30 minutes? Well, both offense, for the most part, did what they want to do, run the football, control that on Army's side with the run game. And then the pass game, Mason Fine makes one mistake, costs him some points, but special teams, big part of the first half. Let's head down to Michelle. Thanks, guys. Coach, one of the keys to the game was the importance of taking care of the ball. How do you think overall your team did that, bearing that last play right there? Offensively, we've done some really good things. We just need to continue to execute. Uh, we missed, uh, didn't pick up the blitz right there, and we got a uh, guy in Mason's face and turned the ball over. We can't let that happen. And on defense, we, we got to take care of the fullback. We can't let the fullback run like he's been running right now. It usually is a pretty good thing, though, when you get Army throwing the ball. Overall, what impact has your defense had on this outcome in the first half? Well, they just need to keep on grinding. Look, it's a long second half. Uh, you know, it's never uh, we're, we're up eight points at half, you know, at half and we got, we got to keep making these adjustments and keep rolling. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Michelle. The big uh, play, the uh, fumble of the punt for Army and uh, North Texas capitalized, but Mason Fine with a couple of touchdown passes. Jeff Wilson with a couple of touchdown runs, and it's 28-20 to 20 as we head down to Miami in the BN Sports Halftime Report with Jeremy St. Louis. Thanks very much, Mike. When leading at the half, North Texas 4-1 and one so far this season. When trailing, Army are 1-2 and two so far this season. So it is North Texas up by 8 at the half, and Army will get the ball to start the second half. So down by 
Touchdown and two-point convert. DJ, I want to ask you, because we were having the discussion after we saw the hit on Jalen Guyton, why is that not targeting? Well, that's one of those situations where it's somewhat of a bang-bang play. As you see the defender, he's coming down on the straight track. I think it's because the receiver jumps in the air. Sometimes the defender can't change his trajectory once that happens. Do you agree with the call? Yeah, that's the one thing you can't control. I know we're dealing with a lot of young, talented football players here, but once a receiver is coming down from trying to catch a football, that safety is already trying to make a play right now, and he can't control where his target is at that point in time. And again, I don't think he's leaning with the crown of his helmet either. He's just trying to lay some. Man, receiver. I disagree, man. Wide receiver, wide receiver, man. You, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock listen, landed on us. It looked Let like me he tell got you a little man. bit more of the shoulder man, than, than that chin Listen. Piece. He was a he was a defensive player. I don't like it because I'm a wide receiver, and I'll say it again. And uh, like I said, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock land on us. Everybody, that was wrong. everybody on the football players. field is a defenseless I, we player. We want justice. Point in time. Justice, and that's but what happened. Go. Justice. All we right. want justice. All right, all right. Well, we hope that Jalen Guyton uh, is okay, and we hope we can see him we'll in the second the half. Welcome back to the halftime show. Let's update the Conference USA scoreboard. Friday night, it was Western Kentucky winning a, a three-point game over Middle Tennessee in triple overtime. Louisiana Tech all over UTEP as UTEP looks like they're going to go over Old Dominion. Uh, Nick Rice with the game-winning field goal there, and Southern Miss drops 66 on Charlotte, wins 66-21. Some games that are in progress. We can tell you that FAU up by four on FIU. Uh, Driscoll has two touchdown passes in that game. They got them in the first quarter, and then the second quarter has been when FIU's gotten theirs as they are down by four. Florida all over UAB, 36 to 7. UAB, who have that vaunted rushing attack, rush for three yards in that game. And it is UTSA up by six on Marshall at the half. So Western Kentucky uh, last week didn't do so great against Marshall, but last night Mike White had it going again. 485 and five touchdowns. Jit be balling. Mm. Way to use that word, and yes, he was, man. It was insane watching him last night play football. It was almost like he took a week off last week. He did have a very good night, though, against Marshall, but he just didn't have the supporting cast with him, and clearly last night these guys stepped up. This is a kid who can make all the throws. He's, he's going to be playing on Sunday. I've never seen a guy look more professional in my no, life. He's the way that incredibly he delivers the football, composed in the way that he plays. His stature in the huddle, his stature yeah. when he delivers the football, everything just looks really good mechanics-wise. Yeah. Man, Not even that, what about the adjustments that he's made this season with all the new receivers, all the new talent on that team, and still be able to go out and put up huge numbers? Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. The, the, the receivers are actually also making him look good with these deep balls, because those deep balls are not high percentage plays, but they're still making the catches. Macarius Fant had a huge night. It was uh, 14 receptions for him. and over 100 yards so uh, getting back to this game what adjustments are you making for the second half here if you are army if i'm army i'm going to continue doing what i was doing hitting that quick hitting option play right up the gut faking the outside option i'm going to go with my fullback because once those offensive linemen get engaged with those defensive linemen mm -hmm. it's got to be a split second separation for those d linemen to get off the football and ultimately make their tackle on the line of scrimmage and they're not doing that they're getting to the second level could that hit on jalen guyton be the turning point for army in this game it better not be because I, I'm still pulling for uh, Northern Texas. But um, for Army, the only thing you can do is just continue to do what you're doing because they're, they're one-dimensional when it comes to the run and try to stop the pass uh, that, you know, North Texas is doing down the field uh, with the play action. It's being played exactly how Army wants the game to be played. They're yeah. down by seven, getting the ball back at halftime. The fullback's been getting off. Look for Bradshaw to now start pulling that ball and going yard with it. Down by eight at the half. Oh, North sorry, Texas eight. have outscored their opponents 177 to 148 in second halves this season, and they'll try to keep that going in this one. That will do it for the halftime show. Mike Gleason, former Winnipeg Blue Bomber quarterback Sean Salisbury, and Michelle Jangris will take you through the second half. Through 30 minutes, it is North Texas up 28 20 over Army. Stay tuned. Second half kickoff is next. And we welcome you back inside Apogee Stadium in Denton, Texas. As you take a look at uh, some of the game trends right now, 35 rush plays, no surprise there. And just two pass plays for Army. Everything's pretty even except for that fumble. And, uh, of course, Army won the toss. They deferred, yeah. so they're going to get the football first. Right, and offenses are doing what they want. And going back in that first half, we had talked after we, we got off the air before we went to the studio back in Miami, is on that fumble that they 
came back and said that the ruling on the field stands. Well, the ruling did they, they it was a fumble. Right. And they couldn't tell who recovered the ball. As I, when I had mentioned it to you, and we were talking, and if you can't tell who recovers the fumble, you got the team that fumbled it has got to retain it. Well, that's what happened. That's why the explanation went there. Great job by the officials. Um, let's hope also on the hit that so, Guyton took. He's okay coming out in the second half. We'll find out. But offensive trends are exactly what we expected him. Not many mistakes. The blitz and the interception on fine as they gave away points in the uh, first half. And there's Bradshaw. Look at this. 138 a, yards already, Sean. Rarified air now. You're getting special performances by both quarterbacks for different reasons as their games are different. But, man, nonetheless, both really, really good football players, and it's obvious they're the leaders of their football team. So, Sean, really it's on that Army defense to stop North Texas now, get a couple of stops, exactly right? Because, right. Uh, because obviously uh, North Texas hasn't done a great job with that triple option. As we look, take a look at uh, the new deep man now, that's Artis Hobbs, a freshman out of Georgia, back to receive the kick. And you heard Seth Luttrell talk. we got to stop the fullback, head coach at Texas, North Texas. Hobbs trying to get to the edge, and he's finally uh, tripped up. Taylor Robinson with a shoestring uh, tackle there on the young freshman out of Covington, Georgia. So Army now. Mentioned everything uh, pretty uh, even. Army with 272 yards in that first half. Uh, North Texas at 220. But again, that turnover very costly. And North Texas capitalized. Uh, Bradshaw, 138 yards rushing. Not quite what he did to uh, Fordham in the opener this year. Nine carries for 177. That's a 19.6 average. But uh, And remember, we haven't seen Kel Walker since that first quarter injury as well. The running back for Army, who's a big part of their offense as well. First play of the second half, down by eight. It's going to be Bradshaw again. Very deceptive, and Bradshaw's off to the races inside North Texas territory near the 40-yard line. Mike, have a look on this fullback belly fake, how he follows the fullback after. A lot of times they'll commit to the fullback and forget that the guy can come back behind. It's just that's why you, that's how you read it. If your eyes aren't open as a quarterback, you can't see that. Great job. They tackle the fullback. He follows it. Basically, the fullback becomes a lead blocker by getting in the way. Bradshaw's as good at this. We think Georgia Tech and Navy, Army. He's as good at this triple option as anybody in America. You know, Sean, I said it's not as good as the 9 for 177 against Fordham, but he's going to go over 200 tonight. Here he is again. A little sidestep inside the 25 down to the 21-yard line before he's finally... Uh, Ridden down by E.J. Igea. Can't begin to tell people how difficult this is because you've got running the triple option as a quarterback. Look at the cutback. One puts his right foot in the ground. Good vision to cut back. And then makes a guy miss with an arm tackle, putting his left foot in the ground. He is so versatile. Heck, he doesn't, no, no wonder. He doesn't need to throw the football. <laughs> as efficient as he is running the football, one of the better decision makers at quarterback in the country. This guy's special. Well, Brent Davis says he's like a chess player. He, he really enjoys those uh, split-second decisions. It's one thing when I played quarterback in high school. I liked to throw it, but I was terrible at running the option. I didn't like those split-second decisions. I don't want any part of the option. It'd take me four minutes to get to the end. This guy is such a good decision maker. Great inside charge again. We've seen that twice now, once in the first half now and once here early in the second half where the inside in this 3-4 defense, the inside making sure that the fullback doesn't get ahead of steam. And if you can hold him to no yards or lost yards, and uh, you win because if they get three yards, they consider it a win, does Army's offense. Bradshaw, the first 1,000-yard rusher since 2014. He has 191 already, and here he goes. He's going to be hit and wrapped up by Keeman Hall, I believe, made the initial contact. Or check that. That's 18, Joshua Wheeler. The senior from Grand Prairie, Texas. And part of the North Texas success this year, and especially against this option now in this game, it'll hold true for what Seth Luttrell, the head coach at North Texas, told us yesterday, is keep this team on edge. He doesn't ever want him to relax. I mean, relax to the point of being casual. No, relax and play free, yes, but stay on edge every game, every play. They're down and six. Here's the pitch outside. Fred Cooper. Cooper inside the 10. Five and inside the pylon for the touchdown. So you mentioned uh, Kel Walker's out with that injury. Fred Cooper getting some carries and made the most of that one. Nice job. Look at the, watch him hold, hold the ball. Belly fake. They jump it. 
quick pitch. Remember I told you about that point guard and the ability to deal the ball quickly? And Seth Luttrell, the head coach, told us that as well yesterday. They're so good at getting rid of the ball, as did Troy Reffitt, the de uh, defensive coordinator for North Texas, that Bradshaw is so good, no matter how quickly you get to him, he's adept at pitching that ball quickly and accurately. And you saw it, the perfect pitch out in front, like a throw out in front. A couple missed tackles in the secondary leads to a touchdown at the front pylon. It's early, but it looks like they're going to go for two and try to tie this thing up. See, to me, uh, to me, I, I don't, it's, it's, kind of surprising. it's too early. But then again, that's why he's on the sidelines. Coach Monken is a lot smarter than I am. But when you run this triple option as well as they do and average as many yards as they do, this is uh, legalized theft in this game so far. Bradshaw behind Cooper. Bradshaw trying to move the pile. He does into the end zone, and there's two. We're tied at 28. Well, there's that rule change a couple of years ago about the bush push. Yep. Maybe more than a couple now, but where your guys can push you from behind. Great job, because the initial stop on Bradshaw had him stop short, and then you get a push by your guys, and he gets into the end zone. And now we got an injury uh, on the field. Looks like Tillman Johnson, yeah. Let's hope he's okay. So I guess if you're that good running it, you might as well go for two every single time. Great job of Bradshaw on the touchdown. Gets outside, gets your big fellas on the edge, get to the front pylon. We're at a tie ball game. Well, back in Denton, Texas, Mike Gleason along with Sean Salisbury and Michelle Gingras down on the sidelines. It's kind of chilly down there. Hopefully Michelle's still down on those sidelines. It's kind of windy and uh, cold here in Denton, Texas. And when we say that, people in the Midwest and the East are laughing at us <laughs> right, in Texas. Exactly. <laughs> well, Jeff Monken, you know, I liked uh, you talked about that four down territory. I liked what he said. Uh, he said, you know, a lot of teams have third and seven. Well, they have a pass and a punt. So we have uh, third and seven. We know it's uh, two more runs. So, And uh, tough to stop this uh, triple option as uh, Shrag gets ready to kick off once again. So we're all we, tied up at 28. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mike. We are so fortunate that the, that the coaches and coordinators, the staffs of both of these teams, the trust they have, and it starts with Coach Luttrell and obviously Coach Munkin and their football teams, and it's been showing throughout the season and tonight. Evan Johnson, the freshman, uh, the deep back, and uh, this is going to hit. And here he comes. He's going to take it out. Johnson spins just over the 12-yard line, and he's hit. And he's down at about the 13. So a little more green in front of Mason Fine and company this time as they try to snap this 28-28 uh, tie. Now, this is where Graham Harrell would like a touchdown drive, but a little bit longer this time. No question yeah. about it. It is... Uh, you keep touching the football and get anywhere. We had one punt today. Is that what we've had? Right. So one punt and a whole lot of kickoffs. And I'll tell you the most impressive thing, too, is when you take a look at uh, the offense for Seth Luttrell and Graham Harrell, is what, they give up, what, 18 sacks this year, which is about one plus a game. That's about as good as you'll get in the country. That's special as much as they throw it. And that's down from 43 last year. And just, There's a sack, and that's going to be a safety. Just as I say it. Are they going to spot the ball just over the goal line, or is it going to be a safety? I think they're going to spot forward progress or backward progress where he was stopped at about the one or two. Was that Alkerman busting in? He's their, he's their most active player and gets in the backfield. He's a, a hybrid player. Have a look now. Try the fake. Not a big fake. A little jailbreak. No, I guess it wasn't Aukerman. No, it, was it sure was yeah, No, that was Kenneth Brinson. Brinson. That's a 4.0 student that understands where to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They've had eight and a half sacks over the last three ball games. Bussy with his third catch. Bussy up over the 20-yard line. So that gives uh, North Texas some breathing room. Boy, ice water in his veins for that quarterback. And I, when, and I love that Graham Harrell, hey, when your offensive line does such a great job up front, okay, right when I say it, they give up a sack, you're backed up, and what do you do? You trust. And we heard that word mentioned a bunch yesterday from this staff, that they trust Mason Fine and the kid, not a big rah-rah guy, but a great leader, gets the ball out quickly, and again, you see Bussy come back and finish at the QB. Wilson, Wilson. Slides through that right side up over the 25 to about the 28-yard line. It is a huge win. First of all, to have the to, to have the guts to throw it out of your own end zone after taking the sack, and we're in a 28-28 ball game, and to put it in his hands, and then like I said, they're getting singled outside with this quarters coverage where it's quarter quarters, where you're getting that uh, quarter of the field, or cover three where you're getting three deep, and you can pound those outside lanes, and we're seeing it. 
Wilson bounces to the outside. Stop shy of the 35-yard uh, line. Uh, coming up to make the uh, stop is Cole Christensen. Let's head down and uh, hear what Michelle has for us. Hey guys, just got a quick update from the team on Jalen Guyton. I mean, it's probably not much of a surprise, but he will not return following concussion protocol. Yeah, he looked when they had him set up, Michelle, that he was, he took that, that big hit by England and uh, looked a little woozy, and that's a smart move and a safe move by North Texas and the football team. Boy, a lot of cushion on Bussy that time. Cameron Jones uh, was about seven or eight yards back. And when, 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 I, when you hear people say, oh, cover three, what does that mean? It means your safety and two corners have a third of the field, which they're usually backed off a lot of times when it's three off coverage. They're playing 10 to two, giving you an eight to 10 yard cushion, and you can work the outside, and it's basically man coverage because the free safety's in the middle of the field. You got a lot to work with as long as those big guys up front can protect, and they're doing that. Mason Fine, nice job picking up the uh, pressure, but he goes down anyway, busting through to make that tackle. That time was uh, John Boyce, the senior from Wildwood, Missouri. That's the one you got to throw away now. Outside blitz, great job stepping up with a nice block by Nick Smith, but then the inside pressure and the finish. Missed the block inside by the guard and they run it down. Heck of a job by the back to pick up the pressure on the outside, but got to get most dangerous man. Excellent job by the inside pressure by uh, Army's defense. So now it's second and 22, trips to the top of your screen. Mason Fine has nowhere to go, makes something out of nothing. Penalty flags all over after the tackle. Tell you what we've noticed while we wait on this on the flag call, is coming out here in this second half, the pressure, and they wanted to blitz that Army more. They wanted to pressure and pressure. They didn't get to the quarterback much in the first half other than that hit on the interception on Fine. And this opening of this second half, you've seen pressure three or four or five snaps. Personal foul, unnecessary rudeness, defense number 23, 15-yard penalty. Elijah Wiley. England uh, back in the secondary. Elijah Riley has been banged up. He got back, but that's a costly penalty. And a great job of putting the pressure on the quarterback and forcing the run because they had quick, immediate pressure. Uh, the, the pressure was so immediate, it almost looked like they were running a quarterback draw. And they had him down and tackled, and you come in with a late hit like that. That's a free 15 yards. Drive your coach crazy. But the pressure is starting to ramp up. Look for Mason Fine and Graham Harrell to try and get the ball out quicker with the quick game now. You know, Army had four uh, penalties in the first half. North Texas still with no penalties. Mason Fine winds up, fires and has his man at the 10 yard line. Michael Lawrence. Well, he put some air under that one. Yeah, you put air, drop it in the trash can, drop it in a bucket. I love this. You change the launch point, meaning you don't keep dropping the quarterback back in the same spot. They've been getting pressure the last three or four plays. Look, it changed the launch point, move the pocket, little pump fake. Gets by the secondary. Excellent job. And that's England who he got by. And a great throw. It throws it out front. It's a touchdown. Great air. Give your guy a chance to catch it. Down to the red zone. Wilson gets over the line of scrimmage. Maybe one, uh, maybe two before forward progress. Lawrence, incidentally, came into the ball game with 45 catches, identical with Guyton. He had five for 63 last week, and that was a big one. And both teams are crushing it in here in the red zone offensively. And just once again, when you explain the changing of it, when you change that launch point, the defense doesn't know where the quarterback is. There you see Army's four for four in the red zone, and North Texas three for four with another trip here. We'll see if they can get four for five out of this. Wilson, nice job, but number 21 again, Alex Ackerman busting through. You know, he goes 260. And is active too, can run. He's, he's really good when pressuring the quarterback, but he's so good at that hybrid position and being able to run. The guy is physical, and as you can see, you want to play that side-to-side -side horizontal football. That's not exactly what the North Texas wants to do. Now you're forced in a longer yarded situation. Back of the end zone help. Let's see what Graham Harrell calls on for his poised quarterback. We've seen the fade route a couple times. See if they attack the inside as opposed to the outside. Bateman, the defensive coordinator, says Ackerman's like uh, Charles Barkley when he played in the NBA. We'll explain that in a second. Finds the Fires, inside. there's another touchdown. 
Michael Lawrence. That's number three for him and number three on the night for Mason Fine. How's this for not getting to, not trying to creep up in the pocket? Hold your water, Mason Fine. Watch. Wants to throw the fade. Pump fake. Eyes go back inside. As I said, they might try to attack the inside. Nice job of not climbing too far in the pocket. Stay there. Hold your water. Boom. For the touchdown. Inside, nobody there. Great job. It just becomes basically a bona fide check down. Great vision by Fine and another great drive. Great play call by Graham Harrell. Last week, this North Texas team had a four play, 80 yard drive in 35 seconds. That one goes 10 plays, 88. It wasn't 35 seconds, but was it enough time off that clock? But I guess the bottom line is they'll take the touchdown. And how about Trevor Moore, the kicker, has been kicking with a torn MCL most of the year. About the toughest guy they have on this football team. Mason Fine now with 25 touchdowns. Back in front in Conference USA. Back in Denton, Texas, uh, 35 to 28. Just saw the Mean Green of North Texas uh, answering with a 10 play 88 yard drive. Michael Lawrence with his third touchdown reception. Having a great year, 11 catches last year. Now he's uh, close to 50. You know, we talked about being winning a bowl game was one of their goals. Yep. Seth Luttrell also said one of the goals on their list this year was to run the table at home. And they're 5-0 and at home right now, uh, averaging about 44 points inside this Apogee Stadium. It looks like they're going to get to that 44 again. A great job by Lawrence. We talked about the quarterback, but sitting down in the hole. Instead of running through a zone coverage orbit, you don't want to run through the cover. You create vision. If the quarterback can't see you or you can't see him, how can he see you? Sit down in the hole, allow your quarterback to find you. Great job by Lawrence sitting in there for the touchdown. More with the kick. Hobbs, the freshman out of Georgia, at the 14. Hobbs finds the seeing a little bit of a, a lane, and he's finally dropped down at about the 31-yard line. Good Good return. You like to start from there. And I just want to personally say thank you. It's great to be back in. We haven't been together in a long time. I appreciate you're such a pro and to be in sports and Conference USA for having me and covering this great football game. I used to live in Dallas for about 10, 12 years. And also to be able to be here with Army as well. My dad was an 82nd Airborne. Uh, he passed away. So I'm honored to do it all. Just to be football, two great teams, working with you guys and a great crew. I know you guys didn't expect it. What the heck? I'm just honored and happy to be a part of this. Well, we're glad to have you aboard. As a matter of fact, at the top of the broadcast, I said former USC and NFL quarterback, but I should also mention the Grey Cup championship. Yeah, let me have that cup, okay? Can we have that Grey Cup? <laughs> so, Winnipeg. Nah, yeah, yeah, Blue Cal Bombers, great fans. That was fun. You being a California kid uh, going up to Canada, and uh, you said that cold weather didn't bother you. How odd was it that I, uh, as a California kid, that most of my good games, and there wasn't that many of them, were in bad weather, whether it was there or in the NFL. He put me in good weather, and I became just a guy. Okay. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have played for the Vikings there you they go. played indoors, right? There you go. Wow, stood up at that time. Nice tackle by E.J. Igea. Being alive, is he a good football player? Great job of charging down the line of scrimmage and getting there. Now, that we've seen both defenses now change a little bit here in the half. Great job reading, and he's reading the leverage offensive player sees him go down he follows him down the line which they're taught to do and it enables him to be in position to wrap up and make the tackle inside nice job with an outside player making a tackle inside and understanding tendencies and reading the line there's a third and five for Bradshaw keeps it and he's going down now here's where it'll get interesting got to punt it here don't you well you'd think but North Texas as they told us yesterday that this football team, you'd be prepared for them to, to, to go for it all the time. And now it looks like they're going to punt because this you always prepare for four downs when you're playing against Army. But a nice job by Troy Reffitt's defense. These are what you, you don't get many three or four or five and outs or a three and out like this one and force it to punt. And this is huge to get you the ball back. They got a good punter. Schrag averaging about 45, about 44.8. Jalen Darden. Ackett is 20, lets it go, and it goes out of bounds. Where are they going to spot this way up near the 35? That went off the side of his foot. Those, reg those rugby punters, I give them a lot of credit, man. On the run, I'd try to, I'd, I'd, I'd miss it half the time like I would a dog on golf shot. Well, Sean, they're going to spot it. It looks like the 25 yard line. There were a few boos in the stadium. It looked like it went out of bounds before that. 35 28, 509 to go. Quarter number three. Welcome back, everybody. 
everyone to North Texas where the Mean Green are leading 35 to 28. And just speaking with North Texas coaches earlier, they said that the biggest difference between this season and last was that the players have learned how to properly prepare for each game. They approach week 12 the same way that they approach week one. They said they haven't done that in the past. They've done a really good job of maintaining focus and preparation. The only time really the season that they felt that they didn't do that was against FAU. But they've had plenty of familiarity with this Army team. They're seeing them tonight for the third time in 13 months. Yeah, that's a good point. You bring up FAU. Uh, they gave up 69 points, and uh, Seth Luttrell said some of the kids were uh, just uh, reading their own press clippings, and they went down to Boca. A lot of kids hadn't been to Florida. They uh, kind of lost their focus in that one, uh, but Michelle, I understand they got that focus back in a hurry. Yeah, they got that focus back real quick. At practice the next week, they were they had to do 804 up-downs. Every five <laughs> yards, they had to do a certain amount of up-downs till they got to 804 because that was the total number of offensive yards against them uh, when they played FAU. Hey, and Michelle, I, I about passed out when, we, when he told us at the meeting yesterday. <laughs> and about passed out. That's unbelievable. And that was the turn. As you remember, Seth Luttrell also said, when, when the coordinator told us, when Coach Fer, uh, Coach told us that uh, they did those 804 up downs, they said that was a dark day for them, and it was a turning point in their season, that FAU game. It wasn't even just that he said he ran out of time and he would have done 804 leg lifts, but the practice had to end at some point. <laughs> Rico Bussey with the uh, with the jet sweep. You know, you think that'll help us on the nutrition program there, buddy? <laughs> Maybe eight, 804 up downs. <laughs> I, could, I could lose that 10 pounds that I wanted to lose. Huh? Here we go. Little motion. Inside shovel pass. This guy's been a great player, has Bussy for them. He's nice really job of stretching lately. it. Yes, he sure has. Great job of stretching it by Army's defense. Puts him in long yardage. I can tell you one thing, Graham Harrell, former great quarterback at Texas Tech, is not afraid to rip it in this situation. Third and seven. It's not going to be, it's dropped. It wouldn't have been a first down anyway. Ten of receiver that time was uh, Jason Pirtle. Would have been his second catch of the season. Two things. Why, the, the, we don't see Mason Fine do this very often. He's so accurate. What, almost 63% this season going coming into this game. Almost 64. But on the actually. shallow crosser, you got to put the ball out in front to give your guy a chance to put his foot in the ground and get north and south. And they may not have got the first down on that, but you got to set your feet. And he does not miss much. And that's one you miss. Had a great opportunity, but now you got to punt it back with that seven point lead. Those are the ones that Seth Luttrell and Graham Harrell want at least to get on the other side of the 50. And now they have to get one of those stops that uh, Troy Refford talked about, huh? Three out of five or a couple of stops per half. Army will have great field position yeah. at the 41 yard line. And, you know, as Coach Refford told us yesterday, North Texas' defensive coordinator, that they are. You know, you have to stop the fullback, but you, you can't simulate it. But also that, and I asked him yesterday when we were talking, Mike, and at me, I said, well, do these kids know how good they are? And he goes, no, Sean, they don't, because right now we're not good. We need to play good. We're not as good as we need to be, but we need to play good. And that includes going three and outs like they did last series. This will keep you up at night. Interesting point I'll make on the next one about a passing offense and a running offense when it comes to defensive coordinators and their approach. Well, both these teams still have a shot at uh, winning 11 games in Unreal. 2017, which is a great season. Bradshaw behind Cooper. He's wrapped up uh, by Brandon Garner, the uh, middle linebacker. Nice job by Garner. Nice job of wrapping up. And we talked about half of the, you can't arm tackle this team. Whoa, look at uh -oh. this. Hey, hello. Where did they get that picture? Man, that guy can sling it. As you notice there, old Jonesy in the truck. That, yeah, great cup champions, but I'm not on the move. I'm in a pocket. Because <laughs> that guy behind me on my left shoulder, is he, he was going to run me down. Thank goodness. I think that resulted in a touchdown. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Didn't they all, huh? Exactly. The fish story gets bigger every year. <laughs> oh, the fullback gets it uh, that time. Uh, that time a good read by North Texas on the first man through, and it's going to bring up another third down. About that, we were talking about uh, Coach Reffitt, and I asked him, okay, you don't know either thing. You want to, what's tougher to, if you've never played against either one, a spread offense with a quarterback who can rip it around the lot, throw for 400 yards, or the triple option, what is more difficult going into if you've never seen either one? He said, without question, the triple option, and you see it here tonight. I think a lot of coaches would say that, huh? No doubt about it. Third down, John Trainer in motion, uh, but Bradshaw keeps it. Untouched again, finds that lane, and he's finally dropped at the 30-yard line, so he's over 
200 yards rushing tonight. You know what? If we, if you could tell, watch, watch when the first touch on Bradshaw is. There's five yards. There's 10 yards. 15. About what? 20, 21 yards before somebody puts a hand on. That is the pitch man. That is the quarterback with the ball in his hands. You cannot let him run free. Now, at times you got to force him to make the pitch, or at least make him face a little adversity. You can't give him a free run like that. That's too easy and too simple for a, an offense, for an average decision maker, let alone a great one like this kid. He ran for 265 and then went over Air Force. Wow. That's Look at the difference. Hit. Look at the difference. Ladarius Hamilton again. There you go. And you get tired of it. You finally get to the point where you say a little pride. I'm tired of this guy coming down. Now makes the fake. Comes down. Eyes there. Come up and hit him. There you go. Guy misses and you swarm. When you see four or five green jerseys, that makes it a lot more difficult on Bradshaw to get ahead of steam. He's a physical kid. Now that's the way you're supposed to defend the option. That was run all the way after the fake for Bradshaw. Do not let it. 20 carries, what, over 200 yards now? 219, 19 carries. Good gracious. He may pass that 265. We still have, oh, you're right, 20 carries for 219. With over a quarter left. Here's the pitch. Asbury. Nobody out there turns the corner. So Jordan Asbury gets his first carry. He's the one who scored in overtime to beat North Texas in the Heart of Dallas Bowl last year. That's called being a great dealer at Blackjack Hander Poker. And watch this. Agia comes up, can't get to nice pitch. Boom, can't miss that tackle. And you've got to keep your outside arm free. You can't let him break contain and stretch it and get it out. Nice job. I told you Bradshaw handles that ball. He slide a hand. Boom, the great pitch. But you can't miss that tackle in the open field and allow the pitch back to get to the sideline. It's exactly what happened. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter. It's going to come down to who has the football last, I think. Bradshaw. Mm. Just powers his way inside the 10-yard line. You know, Mike, as a player, you have something to do with this. And if you're, you know, you're Coach Troy Reffitt and you're over there on the sidelines in a booth, you're saying, man alive. I wish I could run down there and make a tackle myself. And you almost feel helpless. You're calling great, you know, you're trying to put your guys in the best position to defend, and yet you're dealing with the magician with the ball in his hand in Bradshaw and an offensive line that's playing so low and so physical, it's really hard to defend. I'd much rather be up here watching it and talking about it than having to do that. Not only is Army threatening, but both these teams are very strong fourth quarter clubs. Final 15 minutes coming up in Denton, Texas. 35 to 28, North Texas sitting on top it. of Army, but Army knocking on the door again. <laughs> Heading for the fourth quarter of the rubber match between Army and North Texas. And North Texas sitting on top by a touchdown. Take a look at the scores last night. <laughs> again, five touchdowns, 485 yards passing by Mike White in triple overtime. So Western Man, Kentucky becomes like uh, bowl eligible. and. Uh, they look around, Southern Miss put 66 on Charlotte tonight. Charlotte's had a rough one, my friend. If UTSA uh, wins, uh, they're beating a Marshall. If they win, they'll become bowl eligible. It's an underrated football team, too, UTSA. And then you look at that FAU score, Mike. They lead FIU 27 to 10. They win that. Guess what? They're the East champions, right? And we got a uh, North right. Texas FIU North Texas championship. Head back to Boca. Or FAU, should I say, in North Texas. Andy Davidson gets the call. Boy, he, he boy, he can move that pile. Probably, probably the best at moving the pile of all four fullbacks. No I think. question about it. Think about the coaching jobs too in Conference USA that some of these guys have done. What Lane Kiffin's done, obviously at FAU. We see here what Seth Luttrell's done last couple of years at North Texas. There's some really, really good jobs being done in this conference and a lot of bowl eligible teams and. UTSA trying to get this win to get themselves a chance as well. well I'm glad you brought that up. Conference USA has uh, two national coach of the year semifinalists. Lane Kiffin and Bill Clark. Uh, Jeff Munkin from Army's on that list and I think Seth Luttrell should probably be on that list as no well. No question. And there we go. We're an extra point away from another uh, tie ball game. That time it's the big fullback Darnell Wolfolk. That's his second rushing touchdown tonight. Movement at the line of scrimmage. And a nice second effort by Wolfolk to get in the end zone. A lot of bodies down there. It looks like a rugby scrum, doesn't it, Mike? And when you've got a guy that's 240 pounds at 5'9", and we always hear the overrated phrase or the overused phrase, oh, keep those legs moving. But in this, for the fullback and the triple option, it can be 
no more true in any offense with any back or any back position in the country. North Texas 4-0 this year, and the game's decided by a touchdown or less. Well, right now they are deadlocked again at 35 apiece. Sprint to the refrigerator and get yourself something to drink or something to eat because you do not want to miss two minutes of this thing. And now the pressure's on North Texas, uh, their offense to score here because obviously uh, that's not the end of it for Army as far as getting into the end zone with that triple option. 58 yards, just eight plays. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say <laughs> I would say that there's going to be more scoring, wouldn't you, Mike? <laughs> right. At 35 all. It's funny, we talked about this. We said, man, we'd love a game like this where the stars shine. They have Wolfolk and Bradshaw and Bussey and Fine. And we've seen special teams plays. We've seen a couple of defensive stands. We've seen big hits. Again, uh, our thoughts to Guyton as he's in concussion protocol and he's out um, for the rest of the game. And Kel Walker, obviously, the running back for Army. Never like to see anybody hurt, so we'll hope that those guys are okay. Well, Sean, that last graphic there, eight plays, 58 yards. But keep in mind, if they have the football late in the ball game, they've had seven drives of 13 plays or more and five drives covering 90-plus yards. So this Army team can eat the clock and they can move the chain. So pressure's on North Texas now to keep the scoreboard, burn out some light yeah. bulbs on that scoreboard. Exactly. And Mike, I've, I've mentioned this a couple times, but it's to me it's so important that how you respond when somebody pushes it down your throat and gets to the end zone, the next series, how do you respond? How do you stop the onslaught? You're at a tie. You must flip the field and get points in this one on this drive. Johnson comes up and gets this one. Boy, that's a tough one to handle. He does it nicely, and uh, Johnson's hit and hit hard at the 19-yard line. So good coverage uh, that time by the uh, kickoff coverage team for Army. Coming up to make the stop is number 11, Donovan Lynch. Yeah, I heard that up here. Nice job. Short kick. Those tweeners are very difficult. Nice job by Lynch to make the hit and tackle, wrap him up, pin him to the sideline. You know, I asked Seth Latrell yesterday about coaches he's learned behind some of his mentors, what he's learned most from each one. From Mike Leach, he said, do what you do and do it really well. From Kevin Wilson, who was his head coach at Indiana, he said, find where the conflict is and know how to attack it. And from Larry Fedora, how to be a great head coach and how to treat people. Learn something from all three, and he's doing them all well. Fine comes out firing. As expected, Bussy at the 29-yard line before he's dropped. Boy, the linebacker uh, covered a lot of territory. Cole Christensen made the tackle that time on Bussy. They were raving about Bussy's improvement, as have you in this game, Mike. And once again, the guy, too many receivers we see round their routes, wait for the football. This kid attacks the ball. And Jerry Rice had told me that one time. What makes especially goes, go attack the football. And that's what Bussy's doing. Well, Bussy's having a big second half. There's Wilson over the 30. Picked up maybe three. Uh, Graham Harrell had a lot of uh, praise for Joel Falani, the wide receivers coach, who used to catch passes from they Graham were, Harrell yeah. at Texas Tech. He said he's done a great job with his receivers. They said, Bussy, wasn't like he was fooling around, but he very light attitude. And they said, boy, if you get serious, you could be a beast. Uh, and he's really come on strong. He talked about beast mode. He talked about beast mode. He's beastly. Full, full grown beast in this one in this year. Bussy with a 60 yard touchdown reception last week. This one's uh, complete up to the 40 yard line. And to check the uh, scorecard for that one, Caleb Chumley. That's going to be his sixth catch. Nice pitch and catch. Moving the chains again. Mason finds in great control on the offense. And again, nice job by the big fellas. Move the chains. Another first down with 13 20 to go in the ball game. Nick Smith. He's wrapped up, and there's a loss on the play. There's number 19, and James Nautical leading the tackling parade again. Have a look at this. This second time now we've seen. We saw one in the first half, and again now here. You go sideline to sideline. When you're playing horizontal football, both times, once in the red zone for North Texas, and now this one coming out, they have been stuffed going sideline when they're playing that horizontal. I think it was the third quarter. They came to the left towards us. And trying to play that sideways football. And both times they've been stuffed for a loss. And then obviously North Texas responded with the touchdown. But on this one, again, when you're going sideways, that is not their strength. Boom. Great job by Army to get into the backfield. And there's no it. foul in the play. It was a legal block. Okay. Good explanation by the officials. And Graham Harrell in our meeting yesterday, he was so pumped. You look like Graham was ready to come out and throw for 400, <laughs> didn't it? 
loved his energy. I liked when he said uh, he, he averaged 48 throws his senior year at Texas Tech, he said, but Seth Luttrell convinced him if we can run the ball for 200 yards, we're going to win some football games. He said didn't and digest did. that at first, <laughs> right. but uh, he accepted it, of That's course. Right. And Jeffrey Wilson's helped that out in the backfield. Mason Fine fires over the middle, has his man right at the midfield strike. And it's another completion. It's going to be Kelvin Smith with the catch. There's that versatile one. Why, now, when you see Mason Fine, there's a difference between throwing a guy when he's open or throwing a man open. Mason Fine's got to the point now. It's tough to teach a young player. Heck, we see NFL guys like Blake Bortles struggle with it. Be it trust and throw players open. Short and small windows. Threw to a small window, and he threw him open. Goes upstairs again, near side. Jalen Garden, who had a couple of touchdown receptions against UTEP. Catches are just shy of the 40-yard line, so it's about a yard shy of another first down. How do you defend that, Mike? When you get a quarterback who throws down, a receiver sits in the hole, and the ball comes out so quickly and you're playing off coverage, you can't defend it. Like I said, it's stealing. Those are so simple, and I always say make the simple play, and good things happen. Mason Fine's making that simple play. Nick Smith finds a hole. Nick Smith inside the 30-yard line. You know, Sean, I like what Graham Harrell told us about Mason Fine. Obviously, we've seen him throw three touchdown passes, but the kind of players that make other players better, he said, if he sees a receiver in practice that isn't practicing hard or his timing isn't right, he's not going to throw him the he football. He won't throw him the, him the ball. That's exactly right. You practice it. The timing's so important to him. Great job, as you saw Nick Smith on that one. Instead of stretch it, put his foot in the ground, got north and south. Went north that time, which is better instead of letting him force you sideline to sideline. Got vertical. Look at the difference. Out of the gun. Here comes Fine again, and again it's complete. Far side at the 20-yard uh, line. That time it's Quinton Jackson, just his fourth catch. Trust. Don't wait. Watch this now. One, two, three. Foot in the ground. Let it rip. Receiver's head wasn't even around. And what did I talk about throwing away from leverage? corner has inside leverage you throw to the outside shoulder the receiver turns where you throw him that's trust from the receiver and the quarterback beautiful pitch and catch by fine so fine up to 3107 yards down on the season here goes Nick Smith bounces to the outside boy a shoelace tackle saved the touchdown that's Ryan England with the tackle now to get movement I'm a big believer as our as it's North Texas on you pass to run and they're doing that. The pass, now you're stretching it out a little more. Nick Smith getting inside. Jeffrey Wilson both pounding it. Great job of getting yourself to that second level. And now you're first and goal. Red zone again. And both these teams have been dominant in the red zone tonight. Here comes Smith again. Cuts it back inside the five. He's finally dropped by Cole Christensen. Smith, only a redshirt freshman. They said he could be the makings of the, the next Jeffrey Wilson. You think they've learned their lesson with that sideways football? Two times in a row now. You see what he's done. There you see. 3,107 passing yards. New North Texas single season record. This kid hasn't even scratched the surface of where he's headed in two years, I assure you. <laughs> Nick Smith looking for a hole, finds it for the touchdown. So the redshirt freshman out of Arlington, Texas, uh, finds the end zone for the fifth time this year. And once again, North Texas is in the lead, 41-35. Murray, Murray, Woodworth, Mose, Henson, Mayfield up front. Look at the job they're doing and getting push at the line of scrimmage. All the pretty boys on the perimeter get the love, and these guys do this work. Easy. Nice job putting that foot in the ground and getting it in the end zone. And another score in the red zone. Big points and a great answer to Army's previous touchdown by North Texas. Trevor Moore still perfect in his career. Well, they went 11 plays, 81 yards, but Sean just uh, four minutes and 38 seconds off the clock. You know, Army, they've been known to use about 12 minutes on drives where they got 10.04 left in this ball game. Welcome back to Denton, Texas. Ten minutes, four seconds to go. Army trailing by a touchdown, 42 to 35. As we take a look at uh, some of the numbers uh, for both teams, what really stands out to me, Army 51 rush plays, no surprise there, but Texas, North Texas, that 30, balance. 30 and 28. That's what you beg for if you're Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator. I know we're raving about both offenses, but why not? 
Why the, wouldn't you? That's perfect. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly the way you want it. On the season, they come in averaging 38 runs, 36 passes. And Seth Luttrell says, hey, uh, balance is all about what the defense gives you, but I think it's more than that. That's yes. great balance. And there's a difference there. between knowing X's and O's and being a great play caller. And you're seeing both of these coordinators on both sides, whether it's Brent Davis and or Graham Harrell. Play callers understand what they can all get up on the board and draw it, but when you're under pressure to make great play calls and trust your team, both of these guys are doing a great job of that tonight and have all season, quite frankly. Artis Hobbs uh, lets it hit in the end zone, so Army satisfied to take it at the 25 yard line. I wanted to go back to this Mason Fine and talk. You know, a lot of times it's hyperbole when a coach talks about his player. And Mason Fine, we're talking to, to Coach Latrell yesterday, and he did coach Mitch Trubisky, and, you know, he compared, he said he's as good as Trubisky is, it's just the measurables. He's the kid's 5'11", 180, 185 pounds. He said, these scouts are going to have a difficult time because they're going to come and see me in two years, and I'm going to tell them, you've got a tough job because you're going to walk out of here and say, I love the kid, but because of his size, I'm not going to draft him. And then he's going to be on a roster for about 10 years, and when he gets in in an NFL Sunday, you're not going to be able to take him off the field. And you can see the timing and accuracy and toughness tonight. Hence Russell Wilson, right? Uh, yeah, you think he's pretty good? <laughs> There's the pitch. Outside, dropped at the 31-yard uh, line. It's Cooper with the uh, carry. So, again, that's the equivalent of, of their passing game, that outside pitch. To, to be, to have the vision and the ability to pitch it. And the act, we talk about quarterback's accuracy. And to be able to aim small, miss small pitch is the same thing. Bradshaw's so good at it. Look how quickly the penetration came across. Boom, he stays out of a bad play, knows where the conflict is, and gets it. First down, gets six yards, and now they're in a great situation with second and four. Andy Davidson, the fullback, trying to move that pile close to the marker. Got to get to the 35-yard line. He stopped at about the 38. And that'll bring up a third down and about two. And Coach Ref and Troy Ref at the defensive coordinator in North Texas and Jay Bateman both. You talk about having your hands full. You hope that you can, every now and then, you'll find a quarterback or an offense and make some brutal mistake. Both these defensive coordinators who are so good at their jobs think what you got to face tonight. Try and style. You can't even stop that at home on your Xbox. <laughs> Bradshaw, that's going to move the chains. Another first down on the quarterback sneak. You would mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Army's only had one 10 win season in the history of the program. Unbelievable. Well, Jeff Munkins said, turned this program around. He said people didn't believe him, but really they started turning the corner in the second season when they were 2 and 10. He said well, they were playing 20 freshmen at times. Three losses were by an average of three points. Six losses by an average of four points. They knew they were getting better and better. Well, here they are with a chance at an 11-win season. Believing in what they do and what they teach and sticking with it, neither coach has wavered on the way they approach this. Bradshaw keeps it. No runner room that time. Nice job uh, by Keeman Hall, the cornerback, coming up to uh, yeah. break things up. Yeah, how about that? Look, watch Hall. One thing we normally corners don't like to do is get physical. You'll see some that do. That's getting physical. That's a way to get in there and disrupt it and hit low, come in off that corner and make a play. When you're playing against teams a lot of times, and there's some really physical corners, but sometimes those guys are known as they cover and play in space. But you like it when they get nosy and get physical, and you love if you're a defensive coordinator to see your corner come up there and uh, put it on them. Nice job by Hall. Picked up a yard at second and nine. Here's the pitch outside. Jatiel Klein. Klein's got some running room. Inside North Texas territory, inside the 40. Finally uh, stood up again uh, by Keeman Hall. So Jatiel Klein, the sophomore from Woodbury, Minnesota, came in with one catch, but has a big gainer there on the sweep. Two things. When you run the option so well, misdirection, you get people running one way, seal off the backside edge and get that down the field. And big runs happen because guys like 81 go out and do their job. A Jekum, look at it. Nice job, momentum, 11 bodies on this side of the hash mark. And nice job by a Jekum, 81 down the field, holding a little bit, but getting physical, giving you about another 10 extra yards. That's how big runs happen. More on a Jekum after this play by a Woolworth. You know, Jeff Ajekum was saying that uh, his high school buddies that played these spread offenses 
after they meet in the summer, they talk about all the numbers they put up or maybe uh, text each other. And he says, he talks about pancake blocks. They yes. really bought in these receivers. They love to block. I get, I, you wanted the quickest way for a receiver to gain respect. This is by a catch and run. It's will you go over the middle to catch the ball and will you block? Watching Heinz Ward in the NFL, he took just as much satisfaction as knocking a guy around as a blocker as he did a catch and a touchdown. Great job by Ajekum down the field. Not enough credit given to receivers for those big runs on great blocks down the field. Cooper, the pitch man, Bradshaw keeps it, and he's brought down. Nice play by number 18. That's Joshua Wheeler again, that Jack linebacker. That Jack looking to come up and get the backfield, and it's one thing to get there. It's another thing to finish and close it out. Wrap him up. You don't let Bradshaw turn the corner. Nice job. Get there, get in the backfield, wrap him up now, and you do hold on to that ankle for the tackle. And I want to go back to that misdirection when you've been so much of that run and every, you can't help it if you're a defender, but to want to chase. And that's when you set up that one, another chunk play for Army. This is a fun football game to watch. Third down, but it's four down territory for the Black Knights. Bradshaw keeps it, Bradshaw. It's gonna bring up fourth down. There's a win for A lot for of him. green jerseys on that tackle. There you go. Running to the football and helping your buddy out. Don't be an I confess he did it guy. Don't sit there and let somebody else go do it. You go there and help your friend because one guy wrapping up may not be enough and you could see how effective inside and outside they've been running the football. You go help your buddy. Swarm to it. Well, Sean, Great job by the Mean Green. 520 to go. How big is this play? Fourth down and about uh, four yards to go. They give you the old clay. It's the biggest play of the, the cliche. It's the biggest play of the game. But no, no one play <laughs> decides a game, I assure you. Here we go. Here's the pitch. Wow. They're going to get it. And then some inside the 20 yard line. It's John Trainer all the way down to the 10. I think that's the first time John Trainer's touched the football, and it is a huge play. Bradshaw's been great at everything. This may be his best play. Watch this. Getting hit in the lower half of his body about to get hit on the upper half of his body, makes an accurate pitch so the runner, the pitch back stays in fluid motion and stays on the run while he's being hit on the lower body. That's the best play Bradshaw's made all game. And I'm talking about a quarterback that's rushed for over 200 yards. Spectacular assist by Bradshaw. Inside handoff goes to Woolworth. Woolfolk rather, Woolfolk inside the five yard line. Clock is running, four and a half minutes to go. Man. How much time do they want to give Mason Fine and company? And imagine if you're North Texas, you're, I mean, defensively, you're like, it's a, it's a chess piece. I mean, they got a queen. Isn't it? The queen can move everywhere, right? Mike, you play chess? <laughs> no, I mean, the play queen chess. can move everywhere. And that's what they they got so many moving parts to this. And it's not a lot of plays, a lot of formations, and unbelievable execution by Army's offense. Davidson this time in for the touchdown. So if it's not Wolfolk, it's Davidson, and Andy Davidson pounds his way in for the score. Holland, Houghton, Toth, the right side of that line. Watch the push. Low, drive, leverage, touchdown. Ten play drive, 75 yards. Now a point away from tying this game up with four minutes and five seconds to go. Andy Davidson. Jeff Munkin said he's coming off his best game last week, most complete game. How deep are they at fullback, my man, huh? Four deep. Wilson with the kick and the tie. Four minutes and five seconds to go. We are all tied up at 42-42. Well, remember last year the bowl game went to overtime. Hold on to your seats, folks. Final four minutes should be exciting. College football on BN Sports presented by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. And John Salisbury right now, North Texas fans are craving a drive of maybe three and a half minutes or longer. Have a reason, have a pretty good idea after watching this game why once the West champion in Conference USA and going to be playing for the Conference USA Championship and while the other team's going for 10, possibly 11 wins on the year and going to be playing for the... Uh, the old trophy when they play commander uh, in chief yeah, trophy. the commander in chief trophy when they 
teed up against Navy, what, the early December, right? December 9th there in Philadelphia. Go. They knocked off Navy last year for the first time in a while. And Boy, how good. I, I've never been to that game. But you talk about traditions in college football. A lot of them have them. Heck, we're seeing that great tradition at Iowa with the Children's Hospital. But man alive, I'll make you the Na Army-Navy game. Think that's any respect on that field when that one comes to play in December? That's well, a fun one to watch. You There's bet no it about is. that. Well, here comes North Texas. It's going to be Nick Smith, and he stood up at about the 28-yard line. Looks like Max Regan on the special teams. They uh, were raving about this kid, this freshman from Arlington, uh, Texas, not only on his return game, but we've seen how quickly he hits that hole when he gets his shoulders square and heading into the end zone. Inside four minutes now, three minutes, 58 seconds, 42, 42. When we come back, North Texas has the ball. Welcome back to North Texas, everybody, where it's all tied up at 42. And guys, got some bad news from the mean green. Jeff Wilson just came back onto the field in a right walking, a walking foot on his right foot. We saw him go off the field earlier, but we didn't see him go to the locker room, so we weren't really sure what was going on. But he just came back onto the field, actually, with his dad and in crutches. So it doesn't look like he'll be returning. So that's him and Guyton both out at a very critical time in the game. Both important football players. Great job, Michelle. Crit important. We've seen what Nick, season. And we've seen, that's exactly right. We've seen Nick Smith, the freshman, step in at running back. And we've obviously seen Bussy continue to elevate his play at wide receiver, both needed in this game. There's Smith weaving his way up uh, over the 30 to about the 33. Uh, Wilson, or Jeffrey Wilson uh, finishes the game 19 for 72, but two more touchdowns. Gives him 16, and boy, you hope he can come back. No question. Came into the game 1,000 plus yards, 1,100 plus yards, and now up to the, you know, with 14 TDs, now up to 16. This kid, it's a really good, but think about the trust that Graham Harrell's showing in, a, in this freshman to hand him the ball with the game on the line. Well, Seth Luttrell said they're in good shape in the future for running backs. This one's overshot. Bussy, the intended receiver. So Bussy, uh, the Oklahoma connection there. Find the Bussy. They've connected for touchdowns in five of the last six. But Bussy, six catches for 71. So he's having a big second half. But that's going to bring up a big third down with 3.23 to go. Sometimes when a receiver's that open, trust me, I know I missed plenty of them when I was throwing it. And look at that, 21 to 31, 294 and three TDs. He hasn't missed many. The one pick on a blitz just before halftime when he threw the pick down in a red zone. But Fine won't miss many there. He had him. A little more air, give his guy a chance. Gets that shot again. If they get that, they'll take it. Play action, third down. Fine. Told you. Goes for broke. Smiley. There it is. Take it to the house. His second touchdown tonight. How about that? They're going to get singled. They said they were going to attack the post in this game. You missed the home run there. I said they'll take another shot if they get it. Defender falls down. Different receiver. Better result on this one. Puts enough air under. Climbs the pocket. Eyes down the field, not staring at the rush. One of the things, keep the eye level and shoulder level the same as the quarterback. A lot of them lose sight because they watch the pass rush. He climbs the pocket, locates coverage, puts air on the post. There you have it, the home run, grand slam. Trevor Moore with the PAT again. And so now Army with three minutes and 13 seconds remaining. Down by a touchdown again. Can they answer with the uh, triple option? Can they go the distance in three minutes and 13 seconds? They, they only three minutes and 13 seconds is like has, 13 seconds is having about that's two quarters for them, right? They can handle that, no problem. Now here's where North Texas defense needs to respond. What an unbelievable job. I could throw the old dad joke in there for my <laughs> buddies back home and say, what a fine job by Mason, but all right, I just did. There you go. I'll catch crap. You, that right now. you were dying to say I, that. I, also. I, yeah, my friend, my, my guys on our Sean Salisbury show right here on BN, <laughs> Shameless Pub, every day from uh, 5 to 7 Eastern. will give me a hard time, my great teammates. But uh, great job on the post. That's a great job of climbing. And what happens in the secondary, Mike, is... When they think that they get a pass rush and they pressure, the quarterback climbs like that. Sometimes you can lose sight because your head is either in on the quarterback or you lose sight. Boom. Climbs the pocket. Great job. 26 TD passes. There's a, another record. He ties it. Single season touchdown pass record. Take a look at that, folks. That 26. 
whether it ends this season or, or should I say this season or in this game, uh, that'll be a distant memory in the next two years. This kid's really, really good. Well, the last drive by Army was 75 yards. They're going to start uh, 75 yards away with three minutes and 13 seconds. Turner Smiley with his second and third touchdowns. The senior out of Frisco, Texas, giving North Texas the lead. He's come up big tonight, hasn't he? He certainly has. Busty with a big second half. And Earlier in the broadcast, we mentioned the fact that Western Kentucky's Mike White had five touchdown passes. I think somebody relayed the message down to Mason Fine. He's got four tonight. Mike White, Mason Fine. There's there some really, really good quarterbacks and leaders in this conference. Here we go. 313 to go. Here comes Bradshaw. We mentioned Bradshaw with 265 or earlier in the season of rushing. That's his uh, tops. He might top that here tonight. You know, you're, we've talked, so there's been so much offense tonight. This is one of those in between. here when you're on North Texas sidelines, you say to yourself, guys, just give us one stop. Give us one stop so we can win this football game. And uh, this is where you got to step up and show what you got. Here goes the fullback. Wolfork busts the big one inside the 40 to 35. They're going to run him out of bounds because they couldn't get him to the ground. Incredible. Nice job and great read by Bradshaw. Gets it to Wolfolk. Straight ahead. He's so physical with his lower half. And then they get downfield. The receivers do a great job of blocking. Get you 10, 15 extra yards. The line of scrimmage they're creating by these guys up front on Army's offensive line special. On that replay, I mean, we've seen Nate Brooks make some nice plays coming up from his uh, cornerback spot. No question. He kind of gave up that time. I think he got tired of tackling these big fullbacks. Well, you get to a point where it's uh, the fist fight. Eventually, it's like, I've had it. I've had it. And this is the time when you can't remember. They talk about playing the entire game. And it's so, it's, it's probably a, a cliche. Everybody used to got to play 60 minutes. Well, you, you do, especially in a game like this. There's the rush yards, 531. That'll make you tired as a defender. There's Trainer again. That's a football nice play there. Nice tackle by Keyshawn McLean, two-time all-conference player. And a possible Sunday guy if there is one in the secondary on this defense. That right there is how you do it. Take dead aim, go get him, wrap up. That is a huge, huge play coming from a distance by McLean. Great job by Keyshawn. Excellent tackle. Something that they really haven't done very well tonight when you give up almost 600 yards on the ground. Now this is one of those bittersweet games. If you're able to pull out a victory in this one, you go back and watch the film tomorrow. And, and Coach Latrell told us yesterday, Seth Latrell, I don't, we don't do a whole lot of jumping down your throat during the game. We'll, we'll make our corrections on Sunday, and they will. This is one of those bittersweet ones. You say, if we can pull this off, we win the game. But then you go watch film and the accountability factor, and you say, we got to be better on defense. But then again, who's had success this year for the most part, Mike, trying to defend this triple option? Not too many teams. It's been unbelievable. That. And this seems like it's just par for the course for Army. But that's a huge play by Keyshawn McLean in a clutch situation to force a third and about seven. There are only two losses, Ohio State and Tulane. And Tulane made, uh, they converted three fourth down plays on yep. the final drive. So they feel like that one slipped through their fingers. Big boys up front again. Boylan and Holland and Kares Houghton and Toth for Army have done a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage. Third and six. Bradshaw has 244. He wants to throw the football this time, and there's Trainer. He's got it inside the five-yard line. That's the third pass of the ball game, but once again, Brent Davis said we got to make those passes count. Wow. Well, that one counted. You want to talk about guts. You have been on the ground. You're 530 plus yards. Personal You're coming foul. in with a little play Working action. The passer. Defense number 15. Oh. Penalties at the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And then you make the great drop shot throw with some accuracy. What hasn't Bradshaw done tonight? I think as a defense, you're so frustrated that you're so shocked they're throwing the ball. You get yourself a roughing the passer call, which trying to stop this team with four downs inside the two yard line around the one yard line. It's going to be a difficult task. What a, I mean, to, to be Brent Davis and make that phone, uh, that, that, that call after the success you've had, risking throwing an interception, Mike, down in the red zone. 31% yes, quarterback. Absolutely. Remember, folks, going back, there's been four games this year. They're 3-1 and one, where they haven't completed a ball. 
in a game that is Army. Will they get the one completion tonight? And there's a huge one in the red zone. This will be the 67th run if they keep it on the ground. They do. Andy Davidson uh, powers his way in. That's no a call yet. That's a touchdown. His second. So Andy Davidson out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, gets a second rushing touchdown. Last time he tied it, he ties it again with the extra point, uh, 49 to 48. Minute 23 to go. Do you uh, now? Do you show some guts and I'm go gonna, for two. I'm going to tell you right now, they very well may. They may use a timeout here, talk it over. When you're a team that averages, I mean, well, you're almost you're pushing your around 550 yards rushing, but you average five, six, seven, eight yards a carry, and you've done this tonight. Heck, what do we? We got a thousand yards offense tonight between right. the two teams. No doubt. And okay. you're and you're saying, listen, our defense can't get off the field. We are on the road. We can put pressure on them now. My gut says they're going to kick it and see if their defense can get a stop. But man, difficult decision. Looks like they're lining up to kick it and they're going to rely on their defense to try and get off the field. Oh, well, back to back 75 yard drives. It's the eighth time this year they've exceeded 300 on the ground. As I you think mentioned, this over is the 500. right call, Mike. I'm sorry. Either way, they tie it with a minute 23. It's probably the right call, but if he went for two and didn't get it, you couldn't blame I him. I was going to say, and then the thing here, though, too, if it's with a buck 23 to go, even if they do go for two and get it, okay, so you're up a point, right? Right. right. You, know, you still give them a minute 23, and you haven't been able to stop them anyway. Big return they go down, and that's with. exactly right. So now the bigger question would have been if there's eight seconds to go and you decide to go for two, right. and maybe at that point in time you're so – defense is so worn out you say let's just go we're on the road let's see if we can put it away now because in overtime we don't want to have to keep dealing with this because even though we talk about North Texas being tired how the heck if you're Bradshaw or the big fellas up front aren't you tired as well think, you're running too I think there's a lot, a lot of, tired of players it. out there minute 23 to go let's uh, recap last year North Texas went to West Point beat Army 35 to 18 Army had seven turnovers three fumbles and four picks in the bowl game Army Wins it in overtime 38 to 31. Army's already ran the table in West Point this year. North Texas is trying to run the uh, table in their home season tonight. We've got a minute 23 to go to score as they'll close the season in Houston at Rice. And of course, uh, Army will wait till December 9th to take on Navy in the annual Army Navy game. This has been a good one. The well, last gonna, time we were here in September, it was 46 to 43. Now we got a 49-49 game. They're going to need a little rest after all this. <laughs> Co -co they're not going to have to run a sprint on their campus at Army after all this, all this running they've done in the next two weeks. Smith at the 20, 30, 32, 68 yards away. A minute 19 on the clock. Plenty of time for Mason Fine. But all three timeouts left, I believe, still here for uh, the Mean Green, North Texas, sure. But that truth of the matter is the way Mason Fines handled it. They rave about his poise under pressure. I love that uh, when a quarterback deals with the rest and can handle it, and he's done it well. Both sides of the ball have. Both offenses have tonight. And these are how you judge quarterbacks on third downs, two-minute drives before the half, and when the pressure's on at the end of a game. Not everybody can play good football here. We're about to see Mason Fine. First play, here comes a blitz. Great. Wow. Pickup. Nautical was coming strong. And uh, the freshman, redshirt freshman, Nick Smith, took a hit, but he uh, he did his job. You know what keeps young freshmen, what keeps freshmen off the field is not being able to pick up. Now, he gets run over, but he does his job. This is a freshman having to take on a blitzer. What he does, he saves you from a sack and a possible fumble and army with the ball. This is a freshman who's been thrust into playing because Wilson's hurt. He understands who to get and how to get him. Knows the guy to pick up, crosses the formation, protects his quarterback, allows him to get out of a disastrous play and at least get a positive yard or two. That is one heck of a play by Nick Smith in that uh, blitz. Second down, here comes Fine. Up over the 35 to the 37. Big third down play coming up for North Texas. Obviously, four down territory for them right now as well. Or I would think with a minute five to go. They've had such great success with Bussy, and they've had such great success 
working Kelvin Smith on some inside routes. And we obviously know what Lawrence did on the inside route on the touchdown. You know, maybe I got ahead of myself. I said 107 on the clock. They're adding two seconds back. I said well, 105 left. Maybe it's four down there. Maybe not. Maybe a punt it away and, and make put, sure Army and then play for overtime. Make them go the long way and try to run it and kill the clock that way, no doubt. And hope your punter with the with the uh, the wind obviously has died down. There is none now. Before the game, it was whipping around pretty good. But this is an important play call. Graham Harrell as a quarterback has been in this many a time when he was a quarterback. And you know what he trusts. I, I don't have any doubt who he's who, whose hands he's putting the ball in. That's his quarterback. When all said and done, the question is, if you're Army, do you blitz and try to get pressure and force a quick throw? But if you force that quick throw, you better be a good tackler so they don't break one. Because when you blitz, home runs happen. We'll see if they try to work the inside edge or if they trust moving the pocket, moving the quarterback, shifting this formation and seeing if you can operate on outside coverage man. North Texas, five of nine on third down. This is a third and five. Well, pump fake for fine. He's going to pick it up with his legs. At least he's going to try to. And wow, that's going to be close. That's a first down. He got it by about a yard. He dove and got it. Took the hit. Smart football play. Great effort. Pocket breaks down. Keeps his eyes up the field. Once he decided, he's, look at his head. He's up the field. Then he sees the sticks. Forget it. Protect the ball. Keep it in your right hand. So if you do fumble it, it goes out of bounds. Excellent job by the young kid. Nice job. Understanding where people are, understanding where and the situation of the game. Excellent job lowering that shoulder and getting that first down. Jabari. Now you got to, it's an eternity. You got 59 seconds with a couple timeouts. Very, very big play by. That's Mason Javari Fine. Bordeaux, the freshman from Miramar, Florida, coming up and uh, he did a nice job of sure coming did. up and almost stopping that third down play. Sure he did. Great effort and great job by Army coverage, knowing that Fine was going to throw the football. Uh, playing back, not blitzing him at first, and then uh, playing back, playing coverage, and forcing him to read it out. A lot of times people ask the question, well, on a young quarterback like this, and he's young, but he looks like he's seasoned, he's been playing for four years, it seems, only a couple, is that do you pressure a young quarterback in a situation like this, or do you blitz him? And well, a lot of times when you blitz a guy, it takes a lot of decision-making out of it because it becomes a one-receiver route where you, you lock in and throw the football. When you drop and play zone, now you got to go through the progressions of one, two, three, take off and run. Well, Fine did a good job understanding the situation and broke contain and made a big play. Well, it's interesting you bring that up. Jay Bateman, the defensive coordinator, told us this week, he said, we're a pressure team. Other teams have sat back, and Mason Fine has shredded them. And he, he can't let that happen. So, his football IQ is through the roof. So, brand new set of downs with 59 seconds to go. Ball at the 43. He processes information so quickly and then translates it into a play and usually a really good one. Trevor Moore, their field goal kicker, is long of 48 this year. Mason Fine goes deep and finds Bussy, and he dropped it. That's not going to happen very often. No, it isn't. But he let the ball gobble him up. Look at the blitz came from the backside. They picked it up, moved the pocket, puts air on the deep backside post. Watch it. Normally he attacks the ball. He let it get into his pads. Mm. What's he done all game long? Attack the football. That one he let gobble him up and get into his shoulder pads. There ain't no handles on the shoulder pads. <laughs> this kid is so good. Use those 10 fingers to go make the catch. He allowed it to get into him. And it ate him up in the ball on the ground. You will not see that very often. That wow. Throw was right on the Beautiful. money. Beautiful. They come back near side. Good coverage. And it's knocked away by Elijah Riley. Riley read the route well. Nice job. Squatted on it. Didn't expect any double moves. Squatted on it. Knows they're going for the chains now as opposed to that big play that they just missed. Excellent job on the outside. Breaking up the play. Excellent timing, staying away from pass interference as well. Last one was third and five. Now he faces a third and ten. Oh. And it's going to be picked off by Army. And it's going to be Army football with 38 seconds now, to go. No, oh, there is a yeah, There is flag. a flag. Now the question is. Was there movement? Or was, was there it, a jump? Was it. Was the movement, I think that 
the left tackle moved after the encroachment by 19, the defensive end. The there you go. Five yard penalty, third down. There you go. He caused it, and then the, the left tackle, Jordan Murray, moved. See, fine here. Then he, he realized he had a free play. There you go, move. That's on the defense. He realizes he's got a free play. Take your shot, throw it up there. Something good may happen. Who does that better than anybody in the world is Aaron Rodgers. Uh-oh, let me take advantage. I might get a home run. That guy throws more. He threw more. Rodgers. Start on the ready for play signal. Rodgers has thrown more touchdowns on plays like that than I did in my life. <laughs> Great job by Mason Fine understanding that it was on the defense. Third and five. Press on the outside. Less than 30 seconds to go. Clock running at 27, 26. Fine. Fires. Has his man at the 45. It's Bussy. Bussy inside the 40. And he'll call a timeout with 19 seconds to go. Wise timeout. Even though the clock stops when you move and change, you want to get down there. Now, what did Bussy do this time? Watch him attack this football. Go back and get it. The only ball he doesn't attack the whole game. Leaves it on the ground on that sprint right throwback post. Come back, get it. There he does, catch it with his hands. Secures it in traffic. Gets that first down. Now they're a completion away from field goal range. I'm one of those guys. I'm selfish. The way we move the ball, I don't want to put them in. And this kicker that they have is so special. He's accurate. Trevor no Moore is. That. He sure is. He does. You know, I don't think he's missed an extra point in about 140 plus tries, right? Well, they've got 49 points. That's seven. Exactly. So he's at 148 or 148 in his career. Very accurate. Early in the year, this kid is. He's got a torn a, uh, MCL. Torn MCL. Seth Luttrell says that our kicker challenges everybody in the weight room. He's as respected as any guy on the team. He will push you to the limit. And when they pulled him out earlier this year, I think it was Old Dominion where he tore his MCL. They pulled. They didn't left him. They didn't let him kick off. They let him kick field goals, and he was all over the coaches all game long. Well, still kicking with a torn MCL. He's tough, hard nosed. So if they put him in position, you don't have to worry about his mental and physical toughness. But I'm a selfish guy as, as a coach. The way we've been moving the football. If I was out there, put the ball in your quarterback's hands, let him make a play. But you can't turn the ball over. Get it in range for the field goal. Let this thing go down and let your tough. Mentally and emotionally tough and accurate field goal kicker take a swing through it, but you got to get me about 10 to 12 yards to put me in much more comfortable position. Trips to the near side, four wideouts, 19 seconds to go. The ball is on the 38. Fine runs it, trying to set up the field goal. Gets down just shy of the 30-yard line. 13 seconds to go. Quarterback draw. Okay, here's and now you take a look at this. You're you're at 49s. At worst, what, Mike? You're going to overtime, right? Now, if it was me, I'm not kicking a field goal on second down here. Now you take the risk. I understand of handing the ball off. You can't kill the clock now because it'll be third down, and you kill it, it'd be fourth down because we're second down now. You have to put a lot of trust in your quarterback. One, then we're going to get a first down. If we get a first down, or we'll work the outside lane. So if you're a defender, you want to take that outside lane away because you don't have a timeout. But if you get that first down, you have to alert him, as I'm sure Seth Luttrell, get up, spike the ball. We use that clock stoppage on a first down to spike the ball and give our kicker a chance to come on the field and do it. We'll see here putting a lot of trust. They're bringing the kicker on. Well, now he's running back off. Well, as now long, he's running back on. This would be a 49-yard kick right now, as long as so they are going to kick it. So they, like I said, it would be a lot of trust in your quarterback to do it. 48 yards within range. They're not going to risk it without the timeout, but they're going to try to ice him a little bit. Well, he's 14 of 16 on the year, so over 78 percent. So 48, obviously, no chip shot. But for me, and what I was saying is just to extend that with 13 seconds. That's where that's the risk. That if you do get four yards, you can't spike it. You're not going to get your exactly. team on the field. If you trust him enough to get the first down, then you spike it, and everything's fine. And then they can use the timeout army to ice you. But I think this is probably the right call. The quarterback draw for that, you know, for what would they get about six yards out of that one, Mike? That gives you at least a chance that it wasn't a 54, 55-yard field goal. 13 There's seconds. The percentage. Perfect. Pretty good. Perfect situation would be uh, 13 uh, seconds with one timeout left. Absolutely. But that's obviously not the case. No timeouts remaining. So. Trevor Moore, we were here in September. 
UAB came back. They were down two touchdowns. UAB tied it at 43. And North Texas, to their credit, uh, had a nice kick return. Then Jeffrey Wilson broke a long run, and Trevor Moore kicked the game-winning field goal, 46-43. Everybody went home. I was going to say everybody went home happy. I guess UAB didn't go home happy, but right now it's on the shoulders of... Now look. Look what they've done. Changed it up. They are putting trust back in. Bring Mason Fine back out. It's a gutsy move. Though. Yes, it is. Told you. You think they trust their quarterback a little bit? You've got to be urgent, not hurried, but urgent if you're North Texas's offense if you get this completion. You better get out of bounds if you're the receiver. Great. Which he call. Does. Trevor Smiley. Boy, that ball came out in a hurry, didn't it? Great. Great call. Watch this. Put his foot in the ground. That's one of those you throw in rhythm. It's not three and a hitch. It's not five and a hitch. It's boom. One, two, three, boom. Ball's out. And it's got to miss outside, so there's no pick. That's a great job. Great call by Harold. Great execution. Throwing the ball in rhythm off the plant foot. And now this is much different. 39 looks a lot better than 48 if you're North Texas. And Army uses their final timeout to ice uh, Trevor Moore. I love the guts that you show in your quarterback. And he either had to do one or two things, Mike. Either work the inside and then kill it or pound the outside lane. And he did. But you can't take a hitch. And what I say, a hitch, hitch up and into the pocket because then you're late. That is a rhythm throw on, a, on an out cut. You throw in rhythm, one, two, three from the gun. One, two, three and out. And you've got to make sure you miss outside. Incredible. Taking a look down there and Moore getting himself kicking in into the net, getting himself nice and loose. This is not your norm. This is a linebacker mentality, a weight room fanatic, and a guy as well respected as anybody on the team. 39 yard field goal. What a great call by Graham Harrell and North Texas to try and put this one away. Great route by Smiley, too. Sure was. Came back, pushed off the defender. More from 39. He's got it. How good is that? So be in sports, our second trip penalty flag down at about the 21 yard line. Our second trip. Where the to flags are, it looks to me like it. I don't know. You know that it looks like it's uh, well, the celebration for North Texas has a call on Army. Let's get a listen. Of course he's declining it. <laughs> Personal foul. Leaping. Defense. Yes. Gentlemen's decline. Field goes good. You saw where those flags were dropped, Mike. They were dropped right around the interior of the line. It's about where they dropped the flag when the leaping, when you try to use a guy as a prop. Leaping can't do it. Great kick, clutch kick. Now I never say anything's over, but what a ball game. 52 to 49 right now with five seconds to go. No timeout. So got to be smart on special teams. How clutch was Mason Fine on the throw? Have it look at it again. Moore swings through it. Good snap and hold. Yeah. We saw him uh, right down the middle, loosening up on the sidelines when he took the field. You could just he exuded confidence, like yep. yeah, I got this, guys. Yep. And that's on a torn MCL, by the way, folks. That that MCL has been torn throughout the season. There was a no doubter after he kicked it. Great job. But the guts after the Army timeout to force. Heck, gave North Texas a chance to come over and think about it. That's a sophomore quarterback, folks, that you're trusting with 13 seconds and no timeouts to make the smart decision and a good throw. He's starting to remind me of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. The way he's been oh, playing as of late. Sure is. So they go 46 yards in nine plays. You got a little bit to go to be that good, but I'll tell you what, the similarities, the urgency in his release, the poise, unflappable kids a special kid he will be a household name across the country folks not just in conference usa will mason fine in the next couple of years special performance tonight six game winning streak on the line now for army they'll take it at the 25 now they're going to take it out there he come a little razzle dazzle right now trying to get something going here and they got some green in front of them but uh, there's tackle. a tackle no they're still alive unbelievable this is like the uh, the Cal Stanford game 35 years ago. Now the question there is, there it is. Why would you penalize for too many men on the field if you're North Texas? During the play, men came onto the field. That 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 should not end. That that there should be a penalty flag. Too many men on the field 
Army should get it. Uh, uh, the Army should get another play here. There was the North Texas at one point thought the play was over, and a group of fellas jumped onto the field. This has got to be a flag against North Texas for too many men on the field. You have to call it by the letter of the law. You just have to. If they don't, I'll be shocked. You can't celebrate while the game's still in play. There were two number sixes on the receiving team. The penalties declined. Game over. There it is. Well, so they call a different penalty. Jeff Monken's six game winning streak is over. Now he has a couple of weeks to get ready for Navy. They're eight and three. North Texas now eight and three. They'll shoot for number nine down in Houston against Rice next week. Undefeated at home is North Texas this year. You saw Munkin and Seth Luttrell giving their congratulations. And the hero of the game on the offensive side, Mason Fine. Michelle, what do you got? Mason, how do you characterize that last drive? Uh, it's exciting. It's what, you, it's what you play for. It's what you live for. You live for moments like that. For us to be able to go out there with that opportunity, and go out there and execute and uh, give, our chance, uh, give our team a chance to win the game, that's just huge. Great feeling. You lose Guyton, you lose Wilson. What do you think about your other players stepping up and filling those roles? You know, they do it every day in practice, and they were ready for it. When the opportunity came, they attacked it. So I got to give a great, you know, just a great nod to our teammates, especially uh, those guys that stepped up and came in and made plays. Uh, just, you know, just great to have teammates like that. I know you're a very humble guy, Mason, but you let it fly tonight. What was working for you? You know, it's just what Army does. Uh, you know, they play soft on those corners. So, you know, we watched on film, and they're going to play soft. We're just going to take what they give us. And, you know, we just went out there and executed. The receivers made a bunch of big plays. Our offensive line did a great job at picking up those blitzes. And Coach Hale did a great job putting us in a, a great situation just for me to uh, be successful. And so, yeah, as we just went out there and did our job. Congratulations on a great one. Enjoy this one, all right? Guys, back over to you. Thanks, Michelle. What? Fine. 24-36, 386, four more touchdowns, eight touchdowns what? in the last two weeks. What an unbelievable job by both coaching staffs, and offensive in particular. And while we give Mason Fine all that credit and well-deserved, we rave over him. Let's not forget the other quarterback. Bradshaw was through the roof. His decisions were out of this world, and he played an unbelievable game for Army. But a great job, and I guess you're allowed to run 15, 18 men on the field at the end of a game. Stanford and Cal proved that, I guess, a long time ago. Well, but I didn't see a tuba player yeah, down there. there you but. go. Good job, great performance, and a well executed. And I love the trust that Graham Harrell and Seth Luttrell showed in Mason Fine with 13 seconds to go. I take my hats off to both teams because they kept answering each other with oh those scoring drives. Great response all game. Well, that's going to do it for us here. It was a great one uh, for Sean Salisbury, Michelle Jingris, and our entire BN Sports crew. Mike Leeson saying so long from Denton, Texas. Final score once again. It was a dandy. 52-49. to North Texas beats Army, snapping Army's six-game winning streak. Join us next week from Miami, Florida. FIU takes on Western Kentucky. That'll start Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned after the break. Jeremy St. Louis and his NFL alumni are wrap up the day of college football. So long, everybody from Denton. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. 52-49, North Texas prevails. Welcome back inside our BN Sports studios. It is North Texas defeating Army by a score of 52-49. Man, oh, man, we've had some really good games here. So for this season, this was unbelievable. I didn't, I didn't believe we'd see 49 points, certainly uh, out of Army and uh, North Texas certainly getting it done in the air. We, it was the ground attack versus the air attack, and it was the air attack that came out on top. And North Texas get their first win over Army in Denton in series history. Let's take a look at the highlights. We've had to expand, condense. We've moved some stuff around, so these highlights are going to be long, but they're going to be quick. So we're tied at seven apiece here when North Texas, Mason Fine, the 45-yard pass to Turner Smiley, and North Texas go back in front 14 -7. Yeah, when Mason Fine's able to move around in the pocket like this and sit and set his feet and deliver that football, he's lethal. Yeah, strong arm, uh, great pass, great catch, great touchdown. Certainly uh, some comparisons, and he's just a sophomore, too. I mean, we're going to see this kid for a couple of years. Uh, Army, great little run here with the score 21-7. Ahmad Bradshaw, kind of the, the reverse yeah, you thought, you thought you thought the big story tonight was going to be Ahmad Bradshaw, but for me, the show stealer and the show stopper was their fullback tonight, Wolfork. He was an unbelievable. And that's force why tonight. this play right here worked. Yeah, Wolfork and Andy Davidson both had uh, both had big nights. So 28-20 for North Texas, and here come Army. That was the score at halftime. Army get the ball back right to start the third quarter, and they take advantage of it as they run it all the way down the field. They get the two-point convert and would tie it up at 28 apiece. 
And now we have ourselves a bit of a ball game because then it was really back and forth uh, between the two sides. Army tied it up. North Great Texas will take the lead here. Progressions. Mason Fine to Michael Lawrence. Nice time there for Fine and wide open in the middle. That's one of the things that I enjoyed tonight is as little as Mason Fine is, he still sat in the pocket and took a lot of beating. Here's your boy Wolfhook tying it up. The two-yard run. Yeah, I think he took about three or four guys in the end zone with him on that one. 35 apiece there. The seesaw battle would continue. This time it will be North Texas doing it on the ground. Nick Smith taking it in. Nice cut back there from three yards out. 42-35 for North Texas. Smith had six rushes in the game for 32 yards. Jeffrey Wilson did get hurt. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but that gave North Texas back in front. But here come Army. And the other fullback right now getting an opportunity to go ahead and put a little bit of points on the board for him tonight. I thought their whole running game was spectacular tonight. Obviously, it came down to the last possession. And it obviously seems like North Texas knows exactly what they're doing when handling that possession at the end of the football game. And Andy Davidson getting the run there. And here it is, 42 all. Mason Fine goes deep ball here. Nice Steps away action. from pressure. Turner Smiley. Defender fell there. Wide open play action is pretty, it's, and it's hard work making the defensive back look so bad. 68 yards later. I love the pocket presence yeah. he had there. He knew well exactly done. what was going on, where his blitz was coming from, how much room he had, stepping up in the pocket, shuffling forward a foot and a half, being able to escape that pressure, and obviously delivering a strike down the middle of the football field. Of course, we still had plenty more scoring to go in this one. That was a 68-yard uh, bomb there. Fourth touchdown of the game for Fine, but here come Army, Andy Davidson up the middle from a yard out after a big throw for Army. 27-yard completion. <laughs> I'm on Bradshaw to get them to the one. And that would be their passing yards for the night. Yeah, and then Davidson uh, put it in, and then, boy, oh boy, great play calling here by Graham Harrell on this final drive for North Texas as they went for it on fourth down, got it, moved nine yards closer, able to get Trevor Moore nine yards closer from 39 yards out. He nails the game-winning field goal. 15 of 17 on the year, 52-49. North Texas go to eight and three, four wins in a row. Army's six win, six game winning streak is over. They fall to eight and three. Here's your final stats. DJ, you said you expected about 450 in rushing from Army, 563. Yeah, they um, they impressed me with the run game, but and they also had the time of possession. And when you have that formula, you think that's good enough to win. And here's the Conference USA scoreboard. Uh, these are all, these games have all gone final. Of course, the game everybody's keeping their eye on is the one that's going on in Boca tonight. FAU versus FIU. That game is in the waning stages. It is FAU over 50 points, 52-24. That means that their win tonight puts them into the Conference USA championship game. They will take on North Texas December 2nd. That game will be in Boca Raton as Lane Kiffin gets the job done, FAU go into the championship game. Uh, so that's going to be big. So first of all, let's talk about this game for North Texas. We talked about coming into this game, about the fact that these last two games didn't have a lot of meaning for North Texas. They'd already secured the West Division title, already got their spot in the championship game. They lose Jalen Guyton to a possible concussion, Jeffrey Wilson in a walking boot. This was a costly win for North Texas. I thought it was a costly win for North Texas, but all in all, I love the way that the coach handled the situational football. I love the clock management at the end of the football game. I love the play calling. They put their faith in a young sophomore quarterback to go ahead and light this thing up at the end of the day. And again, it's football. People are going to get hurt. It's next man up mentality. This is nothing but an opportunity. And plus you have a little bit of time to get these guys a little bit healthier. Plus, you're, you're fine-tuning not only for the rest of this year, you're also looking forward to the, the following year, uh, especially when you talk about, you know, and we all raved about him, you know, sophomore quarterback and what he's doing. So let the guy get his, his, his turns and let the guy go ahead and sling the ball down the field. Yeah, the fact that the coach is trusted in the young quarterback to go ahead and bring them back on the field and go for it when they were originally going to kick a field goal. Now that can help the quarterback throughout the rest of the year. Yeah, and it, th they could have won it on that big pass from Bussy. He had that he had that drop. That's going to haunt him. <laughs> yes. But they won the game anyway, so it's not going to haunt him for that long. But are you concerned at all about this North Texas defense, considering what you saw tonight, when they are going to come up against a, a high-flying team like FAU? Yeah, it's going to be a repetitive game, especially the fact that area just came back from South Florida as well. 
They got to stay out of the pool. Uh, they got to stay in the film room. And again, you're dealing with another demon, Singletary. That's the guy that you got to worry about when you're running the football. So it will be a little bit of a precursor what they saw tonight. But again, the focus is going to be mainly on Mason Fine and how he's going to be able to handle this game. Yeah, you definitely have to stay focused when, when you're talking about you know, dealing with uh, FAU. They're going to be have, definitely have the home field advantage. Uh, they're going to be flying high, and they're going to be happy and excited about you know being in that uh, that championship game and especially with uh, Kiffin's uh, f first year. Well the defense is going to be going against an FAU team that can do it all. You have Driscoll, yeah. you have Singletary. I hope that Wilson is back so we can see fine Whistle, Whist, fine Wilson. Wilson, Driscoll, Singletary. That will be a great match. And not only that, don't forget about that safety that's sitting back there for FAU as well. Yeah. FAU can play defense, that's for sure. We have one game left for you and it is coming up this coming Friday. Western Kentucky at FIU, our coverage is underway at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. It is the final game of the season, Conference USA here on BN Sports. So, big win for North Texas tonight as they defeat Army 52-49 to to improve to 8-3 on the season. Great game tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Friday from Western Kentucky at FIU. From all of us here at BN Sports, thanks for watching. Bye for now.